Welcome in, everybody, to the Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee Tournament 2024. We are in Swiss, round number three. We've got another exciting matchup on this Friday afternoon, Friday evening, maybe even Saturday morning, depending on where you're watching us over the world. We've got Jay Tattles, Leggy Starstream, and Owl on the matchups for today. I'll be one of your commentators, T-Pat, and joining me is... Sai J and Sai, thank you also for being on tech today, pulling double duty. Of course, no mind. Uh, it's gonna be a very good race today. We've got one EV runner, so we gotta we gotta cheer on our our EV brethren. <laughs> yeah, actually, I've noticed that the Pikachu runners have been doing quite well in this round of the tournament. Either the consistency is starting to shine through, or we just got some very powerful runners that just happen to be running on the EV side of things. Of course, uh, Saiyan is kind of leading the way, ha has the best overall time, has the best average time, has just been crushing it so far this tournament. Uh, but I would say of these three runners, JT is probably the favorite, even though he's running the EV side of things. He does have the uh, strongest of the best times. And so far within these three runners has the uh, fastest time mid-tournament last round he got a 305. Uh, looks like Leggy's best time so far in this format has been a 314. That was in round one. And Owl has been uh, improving pretty fast, been getting some runs, uh, though just had a 335 in round one and then a DNF in round two. So can't underestimate uh, them as well. Uh, so, I mean, we've seen it. Like, it can really be anyone's tournament. The best times are just one thing. But actually finishing a run and finishing it fast can always be another. There's always so much <laughs> RNG. Yeah, exactly. I mean, the game can be very volatile. Sometimes things don't spawn. Sometimes they do. Runners are just now getting in the game. Uh, Alo running in, uh, I believe that's French? That is? Yeah, that is French. Well, I mean, the, the French contingency in this tournament has been uh has been great to see uh obviously like we've got runners from all over the world not just the states and not just from canada but uh from australia and france being two very well represented countries the i don't know i don't know what they're feeding the french runners these days but it seems that they are always in the hunt yeah i mean staying uh taking world record from etchy uh, on the Pika side of things, uh, with a very impressive time over <laughs> over there, the French are uh, a bit dominating. Yeah, I mean, take take a page out of Etchy's book and literally slam it back down on the table. If you remember from the uh, the tournament last year, we let off the like very first race of the very first round, and Etchy was just like, "Yeah, I'll just get world record <laughs> in the middle of the tournament, uh, two fifty nine forty one or forty, depending on." Uh, count back there. It was one of the first sub three times that we've ever seen. Only like a couple players had even ever been sub three. Uh, since then, five runners have gotten sub three in their respective games. And Saiyan, who took the record away just before the tournament, uh, decided to also get sub three in the tournament. So two years in a row, we've had a player get sub Saiyan three, which is really, really incredible. Right? What's that? Saiyan has the only sub three in the tournament, right? That's that's right. Saying so far has the only sub three. Uh, I believe we've seen a three double O. I think that's also from Saiyan, if I'm uh, remembering correctly here. Um, it was yeah. Saiyan this round has gotten a three double O. So those are the two fastest times that we've seen. Uh, and as for those that have gotten three O ones, Headstrong got a three O one this round. New Amber got a 30103 in the previous round. And well, wouldn't you know, San has also gotten a 301 in the first round. So three of the five fastest times in this tournament have come from San. It's also crazy to think like a couple of years ago, uh, a 301 was unheard of. Yeah. Three oh I mean we for the longest time. Edi was etiquette possible. was the yeah, etiquette was the record holder with a 30208. And when when that couldn't be beat, um, we kind of incepted Barrier Blitz. You remember that? Yes. Do you remember yeah, barrier, barrier Blitz? Yeah, Barrier Blitz kind of was the, it was like the precursor, or kind of like the 
the the incepting idea of having let's go as like a race format and funny enough actually actually won barrier blitz uh even though he didn't get the record time at the time yeah, at the time and it was, was still just the a record holder yeah he just got a 302 30 to win barrier blitz and that was three years ago yeah. already that's unbelievable to think that barrier blitz was that far ago um but how far we've come from a 302 being conceivably the fastest possible time from three years ago to now seeing times in the 259s more consistently and the 258s as the record. I mean, not just that, too. Like, last year, if you look at the tournament times from last year, I think, like, the median time was, like, a 310, like, maybe, like, a 308 or something. Uh, and this year, it's, like, well, like, a 306 or something. Yeah. It's, like, so much lower. I think that I think that speaks to not just the top end of our runners, but just how deep it is this year. I mean, this tournament for, from last round, every single race felt like it was a banger. It was a close one, whether it was for first or for second place. There were some really, really insanely close races, and now that's holding through. So, so yeah. Sai, what are you expecting out of these runners? I know that um, we're kind of on the bottom half of the bracket, if you will. Uh, JT's at two match points, and Owl and Leggy are at one match point. Um, but again, the depth of the field has proven that like anything can happen. So what are you expecting for this race? Uh, I think this one's going to be very close. Um, Owl has been doing very well, getting a lot of uh, good times, uh, in, uh, improving their PB uh, quite well. Leggy, I think Leggy PB'd in the last round, I think? Might be it was thinking, last it might... or the first round with yeah. that 314. And I know uh, JT wants to uh, avenge the DNF they had earlier uh, in the race. Mm -hmm. Uh, checking nature, J Tattles with a hasty EV. So uh, that's a pretty good nature for EV. Uh, not the best, but uh, we'd prefer like naughty or uh, what's the other one? Uh, uh, I don't remember what the other one is. Naughty, uh, or... naughty or like rash. Yeah, I rash think is, is the what other you one. might be thinking of. Uh, but hasty is pretty yeah. good. So we'll be a speedy EV. JT actually just posting in chat. Thank you, not minus speed. <laughs> Uh, yeah, because the EV doesn't want to be minus attack, minus special attack, or minus speed. Uh, you can encounter some s slight problems through the run. Um, just because, like, you're either missing ranges that are not supposed to be ranges in the first place. Uh, or in the case of minus speed, that can be particularly uh, unnerving. Because you do want to outspeed your rival's Pidgeotto later on, which has the move Sand Attack. Uh, and that does make Eevee a little bit more vulnerable than the Pika players. Uh, Pika does not have to worry about speed whatsoever because the partner Pikachu is so fast in its base speed that having minus speed uh, is actually totally fine. In fact, there's like only one fight where having minus speed even makes a difference, and it's barely even a difference. It might be, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, I think it might be Archer's Golbat would outspeed the pikachu but the pikachu can still one shot it. yeah anyways. i think it's that you might take a hit but you still one shot it back like it you lose like half a turn on it if you're minus mm -hmm. speed so yeah these uh these pikachus and eevees are not um your standard pikachu and eevee they have wildly different base stats than like regular pikachus and eevees um the ones that we'll encounter throughout the run that are held by like npc trainers and stuff uh they're they're just regular pokemon these ones are a little bit beefed up in their stats um the pikachu for example has a base stat speed of like 120 or something like tie it's like faster than like latios or something <laughs> is, is that a new one for the meme what's faster the <laughs> what's jet faster? pokemon or a fat cat <laughs> Uh, we could make I, it. I wouldn't be i wouldn't be surprised if pikachu is faster just because it's like you you have the embodiment of lightning and last i checked lightning was pretty fast i'm pretty sure yeah it's the speed of light <laughs> <laughs> rival one just getting started for all of our runners here uh it's kind of kind of a nothing fight um it's it's actually odd because uh the ev has a better time just because you're uh attacking with your uh, uh a bit more of a powerful tackle attack uh however you are a little bit more at risk of getting paralyzed on the fight which is obviously not the issue for pika uh but pika tends to win the fight in like on average one fewer turn that's not always the case as leggy is actually the first 
to finish. Uh, Owl has the unfortunate status lag on your opponent, which just lags the fight a little bit more. Uh, JT had a very standard, uh, looked like a three turn fight there. Three or four. Uh, it was a four turn. Uh, the the other downside to playing on EV version of this fight is that uh, the rivals Pikachu knows Growl. Um, and our only attacking move is a physical attack. So uh, if the rival goes for Growl, it, it can turn a three turn into a four turn fight. So that's the only downside um, of that one. <laughs> Yeah, that's something but I mean, not not a huge, huge issue early on. You're really just trying to you're crossing your fingers that you don't get paralyzed turn one, um, which is the biggest threat, because thankfully the game is coded for you to not get hit by growl turn one. So it actually gives you a chance to get some decent damage off uh, without getting growl spammed, uh, which I believe is a more of an issue. And I think it was like a gen four, like a platinum where like berries uh, like Barry's Turt Twig would just growl you and growl you, so you were only doing like one damage right off the bat. <laughs> I think the uh, the um, the Starly uh, at the beginning of that game also does the same thing. It like will oh. growl on turn one because it can, yeah. Because the way the you get your starter in that game is you fight a Starly right off the bat. If you've never played Gen Four, oh. anyone in chat? Yeah, you're or right. SP, which I don't, I don't know why anyone would want to play that game, but yeah, I don't know anybody who would. <laughs> even want to play BDSP or potentially grind for a world record. No, that's, I don't know no, anybody no, like that at that's, all. That's that's a video game. Uh, <laughs> it actually is faster to lose the rival fight. Um, it's very unlikely you lose the rival fight, but it is actually faster to lose it. You just do. Uh, you have um, a little less experience going into the forest. Yeah, you you basically skip the you, you skip that little cutscene, if you will, of like, oh, you defeated me here's some money you just get you just it just fades to black and you're done we actually have had a rival one fight uh loss uh this tournament amber got it wow uh, yeah oh <laughs> yeah amber got it in uh yeah, no, uh, no wonder <laughs> uh didn't look like anybody opted for the early bug on route two uh now, early there's bug a there's uh, a bonus? being interesting if you, go for it if there's a there's a bonus if you catch a bug um early on uh, that bonus for whatever reason the game gives you kind of like a newbie modifier um if you catch anything before the forest uh, i guess they you know think you might be bad at catching pokemon or something since it's different but um some 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 runners will opt to get like a bug there or something um everyone here opting to skip it though yeah via it not spawning or not really caring. Yeah, it's a nice li nice little modifier. Basically makes your Pokeballs Great Balls. Um, or at least the equivalent of in the catch calculator. Um, so even though you're sacrificing some levels and just a little bit of experience, the consistency of that first catch can be so nice. Because how many of us have gone into this first catch, one controllered, you used a berry, and it still breaks out. <laughs> oh, Owl getting a, a random Pikachu spawn. So uh, on Eevee version, <laughs> that would be awesome. Uh, but unfortunately, Aloe is on Pika, and uh, the number up the top there, the out of 50, we need to catch 50 Pokemon uh, for something later in the run. Uh, and we already have Pikachu in our decks and Pikachu version, so getting a Pikachu spawn is not very good there. Ah, bummer. Can't do the can't do the chain 50 strat get a, just get to a get, shiny, get a shiny Pika that way. Uh, I don't think we've seen a shiny in the tournament yet, so which is kind of uh, interesting. I, I think. Etchy in his last race got a shiny Metapod, uh, and it then ran away from it. <laughs> no. What was a like, beaver! I for this. <laughs> yeah, so everyone uh, making their way through the first trainer in the game. Uh, this fight is miserable on EV version, but uh, very trivial on Pika. Pika, you just one attack and it's over. Uh, EV, yeah, she just, can yeah, attack. Yeah, just don't get hit by sand. She has pocket sand, so. But more importantly, we're on the first catch sequence of the game. Uh, everybody grabbing that lure in the corner to force every the, uh, each one of these following spawns to spawn at level 7, their maximum plus 1 level uh, in this area. Uh, you, we we want to catch as many bugs as possible, Caterpie and Weedle being amazing, because to hit that 50 Pokedex entry, it's just great to catch something that will ultimately be 3 Dex entries each. Uh, it's just this first catch can be a little bit nerve-wracking because since you only have one Pokemon in your party at, uh, right now, you can only use one controller to catch the Pokemon. So none of these catches were guaranteed, but looks like they all did succeed. And now the second controller can be summoned to make every subsequent 
catch a lot more consistent, if not guaranteed, especially with the excellent throws. Yeah, that's one of the benefits to uh, catching uh, one of the bugs outside the forest. Uh, you can enter this section with two controller. So you can make uh, these catches a little safer, um, but again, you'll it's very likely you'll get a low level bug, which isn't a big deal. Um, you can catch like a metapod or something if you get like a low level caterpie, but um, if you get Ooh, Bulbasaur on screen. Ooh, is that the first frick? It's a glowing Bulbasaur too. Yeah. Uh, Bulbasaur a 1% in both games. I think it might be a little higher than that. I think it's technically, uh, since it's considered a special spawn, it starts at 0.5%. Oh, um, and it only increases based on the catch chain you are at. Uh, so once you get to, I believe, 6 on a catch chain, it goes to like 1%. And then at 11, it jumps to 50%, uh, which is a strategy used in the AOP category. Uh, but since we're not catch chaining quite literally anything, we'll only ever be on a catch chain of one. Uh, to see a special spawn is basically a 0.5% chance. All right, JT making his way out of the forest. Still needs Bell Sprout, I believe. Uh, gonna yep, play one roulette. One. Uh, gets it on the first try, so that's good. And I did notice that Leggy had encountered some oddishes early on. Uh, I didn't see if she already caught one or is waiting for specifically for the Route 2 Oddish, which will be used on the Brock fight. Uh, if you catch it on Route 2, it actually spawns at level 9 instead of level 7, which is a nice little boost for something that you want to uh, kind of guarantee can one-shot uh, Brock. Yeah. On the, uh, on the Pika version, we're actually going to use Oddish um, for the first gym leader fight in this game. On Pika, or on Eevee, we're just going to continue uh, with uh, Eevee. Uh, Bellsprout is um, not a very good Pokemon, so uh, we're not going to use it, but it will hang out in the party for a while until it becomes Weeping Bell. Yeah, it's, a, it's one of those strats that was derived from the Pika side of things, because Pika was like, oh, I have to keep the Oddish for like a while, and... Eh, might as well evolve it. It goes to 21. Whereas on the other side, on Eevee, you don't actually use the Bell Sprout for anything. Um, and if you're catching it at level 7, keeping it in the party all the way until it's level 21 feels like a stretch. Uh, and it kind of is if you just are looking at the raw math. Uh, but it helps so much with the consistency side of things for the EV runners because you always do want to have a. Uh, second Pokemon in your party at all times, so that way you have access to two controller catches. And if you're depositing the Bellsprout early, there are actually multiple sections of the game where you would only have one controller. Uh, for example, Route 6 and then at Route 10, you would basically only have one Pokemon in your party, and you lose a lot of consistency and possibly a lot of experience that way. So it just makes the... Uh, just keeping Bellsprout around for that purpose uh, really, really helps out a lot with the consistency of the run. And you get the second Pokemon as a result. Uh, so sacrificing what is ultimately like 40 or 45 seconds worth of time on all the level ups uh, ends up being worth it in terms of the consistency. Yeah, we we just figured out that it was just better just to carry it all the way through to the end. Um the the theory is that a catch is about 30 seconds um roughly uh and every level up is about two seconds so uh you have to level it up 14 times which comes out to 28 seconds and then you know one catch is 30 seconds so in theory uh it saves you two seconds it's not really how it works in practice but uh, it ends up just being nice to make a lot of sections a lot better for two controllers so JT finally got out of that section of Route 2. Actually spent quite a lot of time there. I noticed that his catch count was only three exiting Forest, which is uh, particularly low, uh, but that has improved all the way to seven with the help of a couple evolutions. Uh, Owl also opting for the Oddish on the route. Uh, Oddish being the main Pokemon to fight Brock with because it is a special attacker, taking advantage of that low special defense on um, Brock's Onyx. Uh, I believe it is guaranteed if the Oddish can get to level 10. So if you can catch Oddish and then something else, uh, you'll have a nice little bit of experience. Uh, in this case, the Oddish is just level 9 at the moment, um, but it's usually not too bad 
it might be a range and you might get outsped with headbutts uh but it's usually not a huge issue brock is not a uh not a dangerous fight by any stretch of the imagination yeah it's very unlikely uh you lose this fight um something has to go catastrophically wrong for you to lose here um but um if this fight can go sideways pretty quickly um but the Pika Runners do handle it a lot faster than Eevee because Eevee can't really use the Bell Sprout because Bell Sprout's uh, Vine Whip. Oh, I think it's Vine Whip. It's that a Razor Leaf. Either way, yeah, it's, it's a Whip. physical attack. Uh, and that's not exactly great against the Onyx, uh, even though it would be four times effective. So might as well just use that double kick. Uh, it ends up taking five total turns in the, uh, in the gym battle, um, but it is very safe. Yeah, this is kind of a deviation from uh, Generation 3. These games are remakes of Generation 1. They are a remake of uh, Pokemon Yellow version. Uh, but in Generation 3, in Fire Red Leaf Green, it was actually updated. Brock gives Rock Tomb in that game a move that actually matches the type of his gym. In this game, uh, he gives Headbutt, and all of his Pokemon know Headbutt. At least I think the Geodude knows Headbutt. It might not. Um, but uh, Headbutt is a very powerful move uh, this early in the game. So um, if you get unlucky in this fight, Brock can... Kind of troll you with flinches and and that, but uh, luckily everybody gets through that fight uh, just fine. Yeah, uh, pretty up, pretty pretty solid start. I actually noticed JT with a uh, 1830 Brock split with seven Pokemon. That's pretty much on par um, with any top runner. That's just kind of one of the big thresholds of the game. Even though the pace doesn't really matter until we're about at Rock Tunnel, or maybe until Blaine, or really if you want to get picky, it doesn't really matter until after Koga if you. If you want a uh, stretch of the imagination. Uh, so si, I don't know about you, but uh, I run with way too many splits on my live splits. Like I'm splitting at things I probably shouldn't be splitting for. And it makes my uh, it makes my sum of best look very silly. <laughs> yeah, my, my splits are like uh, I have like all the gym fights and then I have like enter tunnel exit tunnel. But uh, lately I've just been running with just like a timer, like just no splits. <laughs> like I don't uh, I don't want to know what pace I'm on. <laughs> Yeah, that's actually just what Amber does. Uh, when I watch Amber's streams, they just have the total time up. They don't have any splits at all. It's just like, yeah, it doesn't really matter. The pace is a lie anyways. And uh, and for runners that have run this game hundreds of times, they kind of know anyways. Like, you can not have a timer up, and you, you still just kind of know. Um, just based on feel, if like a run is going good or if it's going poorly, just based on your catch count, just based on the time at that time. Uh, I remember talking with Etiquette, who had to run against his 302 for a number of years, and he said he got to a point where he actually had his splits memorized. Uh, and which was a bit frustrating because he's like, yeah, I can't like just not look like not look at live split because I know my splits too well. Yeah, like, time save in this game gets very hard uh, the better you get at it. Uh, Alo getting a Sand True here, which is a nice bonus. That's a nice throw, too. Um, taking taking a strat out of the top runners and anticipating where that circle is going to be, even through the attack animation, being able to line up that throw so that the moment the circle reappeared, bam, excellent throw, that was beautifully done from Owl. Uh, JT uh, picking up the free magic carp that the oh Owl getting a Mankey as well. So nice two bonuses there for uh, Owl. Uh, Leggy about to make her way to Mount Moon. Now, this is yeah, going nice to look a lot bonuses. different between the two games. Uh, JT is actually going to menu uh, before Alicia here. Uh, we're going to teach Headbutt, remove some useless Pokemon from our party. I actually was just asked this the other day. Uh, you pick up the Magikarp, and then you immediately deposit it. And I was asked if, it's, if there's ever a situation where you don't. Uh, unfortunately, with the Magikarp being level 3, five and you're likely going to be getting a decent amount of experience uh you're kind of going to lose the same amount of time keeping it in your party that you would do simply just depositing it 
Uh, so while a lot of top runners will tell you that uh, you want to party manage like super efficiently, like you usually don't box menu unless you have at least two things to deposit, but there are exceptions to every rule. It just depends on kind of where you're at, how much experience you're going to grab. In this case, it also uh, matters that the Magikarp is a pretty low level. It starts at five. Um, so that's just one of those weird little exceptions that you'll see. Uh, but it feels just very natural to do it in that menu as you teach Headbutt. A 70 base power normal move that Eevee gets the same type attack bonus on. Uh, on the overpowered Eevee to begin with. Yeah, I think that's going to be pretty strong for the Eevee players early on. Yeah, it's it's worth it to teach the headbutt right there and just, you know, kind of dump your party of, like, some of the useless stuff. Um, at this point, you probably don't have a lot of Pokemon that don't really do anything, like, uh, that just kind of sit in your party and are done. Ooh, Glowing Clefairy for J-Tattles. That's a, that's a very good one. Um, yeah, that'll so be worth a good amount of experience. Just the Magikarp and maybe a bonus Pokemon if you get it on the route. We saw Alwo get... Uh, Stand true and Mankey. Uh, Eevee version has the opportunity to get uh, Ekans uh, on that route. Uh, neither of those two Pokemon exist uh, in uh, Pikachu version or in uh, Eevee version. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just a little bit. Just adds a little extra consistency to the Pikachu side because you you basically get access to two more likely bonuses as opposed to just one a uh, bit more rare bonus. But yeah, the good you see uh, you see that good amount of experience that JT got uh, near 400 amount of EXP. I think it was 400, or was it like 500 and some? Very, it was a one lot. Of, one of those multipliers. It was a digit number. <laughs> yeah, uh, that EV already at 13 and a good chunk. We'll call it like 13.8. Uh, you just want to make sure that you're leaving this room with like 14 and change. Uh, that way, you are guaranteed to hit 15 for Misty, and that is the minimum requirement. But hitting level 15 as early as possible starts to save turns in the form of hit ranges from the moment of this next fight. In fact, uh, Alwo and Leggy are doing the Sandshrew fight because they still have Oddish in the front of their party. And Oddish can clean up the Sandshrew in a single hit, whereas Eevee cannot. Eevee wants to be level 15 for that. So it's just a matter of... Uh, in this case, doing that fight early and then party managing and then oh. luring, whereas Eevee doesn't have to do that. Leggy keeping the Bulbasaur as well. Yeah, it's already level 10, evolves at 16. Uh, we'll learn, I believe, two or three more moves between now and then, uh, but it adds that extra bit of consistency. I mean, if one if one catch is worth two Pokemon, I take that more often than Ooh. not. Ooh, there's Ooh, a Clefairy. Oh! Ooh, there's a Chansey. Yo, Two pink in the go. tunnel for Leggy. Let's go. All right, Leggy getting uh, a Chansey, which was a good thing. Uh, she stopped and was like, oh, "Do I go for this?" And then the Bliss and the uh, Chansey spawned. So I was like, oh, "Okay, all right." Uh, this is actually the optimal order for Leggy. Getting this Clefairy now is going to be worth a good chunk of EXP and likely is going to evolve both the Butterfree and Beedrill at the moment, which is going to give Leggy a brilliant opportunity to be able to deposit those Pokemon uh, and get them out of the party before going for the Chansey. By the way, that was slick for Owl to actually pick up the uh, Moonstone in between about 20 Zubats <laughs> yeah, on the screen. I thought that was crazy. Uh, very well done. Uh, ooh, unfortunately, the Metapod only got to level 9, so you kind of have to make a decision on that one. Yeah, uh, I don't know. This is... I think this is a tough spot for Leggy. She think... Uh, she, <laughs> did you see that? She paused to think about it for yeah. a second. A uh, bit of a full party, but I think the experience is worth it in the long run here. Oh, yeah. Not a glowing Chansey, so that's that does help a little bit. Nice, excellent. Here. This is like an 87% throw. chance to stay in, I think. Yeah, Very fingers crossed. Two shakes. Three shakes. Let's go. And it clicks in. That should be worth... Is it 1,000 or 1,500? 1,591. Check out all those levels. One experience away from getting Ivysaur before dropping into the bottom room. Uh, I also just want to point out that Metapod hits level 13 and not Butterfree. So, and now you're actually not at risk of having Butterfree learn three moves on that exact level. So 
Leggy has the opportunity to do a very rarely seen strat and is very hard to make it pull off. But you can do Moonstone skip here, which you basically just skip the room that you're about to go in. And instead of picking up the nugget that you would miss out on, there's a PP up uh, on the way to Cerulean that you would pick up and sell instead. Because um, Leggy's done like you don't need anything else from mount moon uh we got our two you know two good pokemon to catch and we're level 16. oops accidentally mashed b on the metapod so we'll have to keep that in the party for at least one more level uh we'll see she opts to just keep on going uh don't hate this play either i mean just go no. for consistency at this level and we do see a paris pop up immediately And, and there is something to be said about always going for kind of like the consistent play. You don't want to do something that's so odd or so jarring or kind of a one-off strategy you've never done before. Yeah. Uh, just sticking with what you know and sticking with that consistency is always pretty good. Uh, but definitely nice to see the Paris show up right away. Yeah. Uh, actually, I believe this is everything uh, Leggy would need now with the Paris as well. Um, unless they want to get a Geodude. Uh, Geodude can be gotten in Tunnel later, um, although it is, it is better to get the Geodude there. here, um, just because Graveler later on gives a ton of experience. Yeah, it's, al it's almost to the point where even if you did wait, you'd probably still uh, you'd probably still catch Graveler. It's one of the best points of experience at that point in the run. Yeah, because even though Leggy is very um, overleveled for this section of the game, uh, the game will kind of catch up. Uh, sort of around the right six, like Nugget Bridge area, where yeah, you're over leveled for it, but you're not super over leveled. Like you're like maybe a level above everybody. Yeah, if you think about it this way, like that Chansey was worth fifteen hundred experience. A glowing regular Graveler at Rock Tunnel is worth eighteen hundred experience. So you it, it will even out, but you'll still reap the benefits of having some early game EXP. We do have a Mount Ivysaur from Leggy. Love to see that. It's been a while since we've seen Ivysaur evolve in Mount Moon. Or, yeah, Mount Moon. Oh, oh, Owl Ooh, Chansey on Owl Screen Chansey. immediately goes back. <laughs> no uh, hesitation Owl is about either. To dump their party. Yeah, this is a great move. Great recognition that you want to party manage here because this is the optimal way to do it. Make sure you only have two Pokemon in your party to limit the total number of level ups across your entire party. Get all those juicy levels on the Mons that matter. I'm all switching to double greats. I believe this oh, one was a just glowing. Missed the circle. Well, I like the aggression. I like the quick throw, like try to hit it while you're in stride. Let's see here. It does pop out. Uh, ended up being... Ooh, it's doing the run animation here. I've seen this one before. If if Owl can get a quick throw in there here before it runs, it'll get a chance on an excellent throw. This at about 75%. Shakes three times. Oh, my God. Oh, no, and it pops out. It's... Oh, it did an attack animation. Owl got another throw off. This could still get in. Come on, stay in. Three shakes oh, again. No. no, and it pops out. All right, Owl, Owl's going yeah. to cut their losses. Unfortunately, I've seen this script all too well. Chansey can be uh, a bit of a pain to catch. Uh, ooh, goes for the glowing Clefairy instead of the regular one. You just got to make sure to understand that you've, uh, you're down... Quite a few great balls at this point. Now there are some Ooh, backups a bit of a... Uh, that they, they can grab. Uh, there's, a, I think, a three stack right outside Cerulean. Yeah, there's a three stack here. But remember, you lost six great balls yeah. on one chancy, So you're still a little bit behind on that. Uh, does manage to hit 15 on this, uh, on this Clefairy catch. Uh, still a little bit jank just because the, the ball throw came out a little funky. So weirdly missed an excellent throw and what really should have been an excellent throw. Oh, it's got a little block of Pokemon here. <laughs> oh, shiny Geodude <laughs> on screen and no one's going to go for it. 
All right. Unfortunately, Aloe is out of. Uh, they are out of great balls, but oh, like just like a frame early on that animation. Yeah, a little bit awkward. How about this? Is this going to be our first shiny catch of the tournament? The golden geodude it is. It is in the ball. The golden nugget. <laughs> I wonder how much you could sell that at the Pokemart for. <laughs> That's got to be worth at least six Great Balls. I think so, yeah. I believe that actually is the first shiny catch of the run. Of the yeah, entire tournament. I know uh, <laughs> I actually saw a shiny Metapod. Spawns. And ditched it. The Metapod's funny. It's red, right? Yeah, it's like a funky red color. Uh, I think I have... I think I have the entire Caterpie line shiny... Just from uh, in this my game. Pokemon home. <laughs> Just from this game? Just from this game. <laughs> uh, uh, JT... I, I actually caught a bunch of, like, things in Mount Moon when I was first learning this game, like, sh oh, shiny Geodude, it was like a shiny Clefable, uh, shiny Zubat uh, were some of my first shinies I had in this game, and then the Caterpies <laughs> started showing up in droves. Um, I still have the shiny Zubat I caught in the tournament last year. Uh, that is hanging out. Oh, nice! Home. Yeah, I still have that one. <laughs> Uh, JT uh, uh, just entering Cerulean Gym, uh, still a little bit ahead of everyone, but did learn um, all the stupid broken moves that Eevee learns uh, here. Mm -hmm. And they are not all called Pushy Push as much as, uh, as, much as we would like to either, have not. us know. <laughs> no, we got Sizzly Slide, Buzzy Buzz, and Bouncy Bubble. Uh, the three moves that are related to the three original Eevee Lucians, you got the Fire, Electric, and Water-type moves. Uh, they're all broken because they are all high power. I believe they are all 90 base power. Yes, uh, and they're 90. And their second, yeah, and their secondary effects is what makes them busted. Uh, the Electric move always paralyzes, the Fire move always burns, and the water move is like a uh, Giga Drain, where it heals 50% of the damage done. Yeah, they needed to give Eevee something to kind of fight against, you know, everything else in the game, and uh, it gave it some really dumb moves. Uh, unfortunate <laughs> Zubat spawn there for Owl, just kind of uh, in their way. Yeah, so we go through the course of the run, we'll we'll understand that the Eevee does get access to a move type uh, for each Eevee Lucian. Uh, we'll teach the Psychic type move later on. Unfortunately, we don't teach the Dark type move, which is called Batty Bad. Uh, nor do we even get to the move tutors that would teach the Ice, Grass, or Fairy moves. I, I don't Sorry, even I'm gonna, know what I'm gonna, called. Okay. I was going to say, I'm going to give you a trivia question. We'll give the trivia question for chat if they know what the other special Eevee moves are. Unfortunately for JT, uh, actually took a death there. Looked oh. like he either got crit or he got burned down to a really low HP. Uh, thankfully, I believe the Bellsprout can actually finish it out from here. Yes. So it's not it's the, the end of the world. Of a, uh, yeah, they will have to center, though, crowd. because we don't have revives yet. Yeah, the first access to revives is actually after Nugget Bridge when the rival gives you a stack of three of them. Nice recovery from JT. Uh, Misty is one of the fights where, like, in a really poor situation, uh, it can go badly. Uh, JT just giving us the replay that uh, Scald put him down to three HP and then and it burned the burn him. Trigger. And that unfortunately would not uh, survive on that. Leggy hitting a Spearow that was hiding behind a bush. Um, so yeah, JT gonna go ahead and uh, just center to revive the Eevee. There are two ways to actually revive this Eevee here. Um, you can center, which is a little faster. Um, but if you're a little concerned about your experience, you can go get the hidden rare candy that's like behind the house and then candy your Eevee uh, up one level um, and that will actually revive it. Mm -hmm. uh, not a bad thought. Uh, you would still have to menu off of that because yes. unfortunately you would not want to go so into this rival fight the, on that low of HP. Because yeah, the only attack. time you would do that is if you're like barely level 15. Like if you're worried about the experience that you missed out on the Starmie and like your level is very, very low, like you barely made it to level 15 for the Misty fight. You know what? That's a that's a good point, because usually on the Starmie, you tend to gain nearly a full level with Eevee. Yeah. Uh, so that yeah, it's one of those weird things that you don't think about. 
So it's funny to see this current Eevee at 16 and change, because that might be like the lowest you would ever see an Eevee through this section of the game. Yeah, normally you're like either very, very close to 17 here or already at 17. You want to be, um, I believe, 19 uh, for the next major fight um, of the run. I think it's 19. It might be 20. Yeah, it's, 20 for safety, it's, 19 to guarantee it. Yeah, the next big level threshold, uh, for Eevee's sake anyways, is making sure that you're always outspeeding the uh, rival's Pidgeotto. At level 18, if you have the lowest possible speed runnable, uh, you would be speed tied. However, JT is plus speed, so hitting 18 is actually totally fine. Uh, it's not ideal. You're still you're still probably saying, "Yeah, I'm gonna get through this fight," but there are still situations where um, having that low experience will continue to slow you down in the long term. Uh, but 18 is totally fine to fight the rival. You don't want to be lower than that because then you don't get the damage boost. Yep. Uh, that is even good enough to even kill the Pidgeotto in the first place. You want to make sure you can guarantee that. All right, JT starting uh, Nugget Bridge. Um, Leggy uh, about to finish up Misty. This fight, the Misty fight on Pikachu version is uh, very easy. We just use uh, the Zippy Zap learn move that Alwo is learning right now. Um, that move uh, is the special Pikachu moves that Pikachu gets uh, instead of the moves that Eevee gets. Um, they are kind of based on like, I don't, they're based on like weird things Pikachu like, does. Like there's a surfing one, there's a flying one, there's a, a Zippy Zap's just a broken one. It's 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 funny you mention that because it's like, yeah, what are they based on? And all I can remember is. If you play yellow version in the opening sequence of the game, like the title sequence, it has the Pikachu with like the balloons and then it has the Pikachu on the surfboard and then it has the Pikachu doing the kick like it's flying through the air and doing the kick. I think it's based on those like frames. Yeah, it's based on like, uh, I mean, there's a surfing Pikachu, there's a flying Pikachu, like Pikachu learns those HMs from like events and stuff. Um, I think Zippy Zap is just, I think it's just like a callback to like the anime or something. Like, I, I really don't know what Zippy Zap would be based on, but uh, <laughs> is, it, the... is it is it based on when when Ash turned on the sprinklers in Brock's gym and that's how the Pikachu <laughs> was able to electrocute the Elect Onyx? Yeah, that's how we bypass type immunities. Yeah. <laughs> just turn on the sprinklers. That's, that's turn a legal, on the fire, the fire system. And that's a callback. I haven't watched. Uh, I haven't watched any of the new Pokemon anime yet. I heard it's very good. Uh, Horizons is very good. I've seen like the first yeah. uh, like ten episodes. Um, I watched them subbed, not dubbed, but um, it is uh, uh, it's very very good. All right, Netflix. I guess I'm gonna <laughs> spend money on you again. I, I actually canceled my Netflix last year, so I haven't had it for a year. Yeah, I haven't had Netflix for a very long time. Yeah. All right. All right, Horizons. I heard you're pretty worth it. <laughs> All right, so uh, JT going through the bridge. Uh, the bridge is uh, very boring. Um, Eevee gets a super effective move for like every like thing on this bridge. Um, just finally getting to level 17. Uh, Pikachu on this bridge is just gonna zippy zap everything, except for there's there's one cool thing that's gonna happen on the third trainer, which uh, depending on which I believe where we're at we'll we'll see what the strategy is for that <laughs> yeah there's either some very risky strategies where you can just go with the pikachu um or the oddish gets uh, another chance to help out in that situation we're actually going to see that on leggy side very soon here uh jt at this stage at the very end where you fight the rocket this is one of those situations where he's just level 17 and not 18. Um, that does mean that the coffee in here is a range, and it's just one of the few things that starts to highlight why having high experience with Eevee is actually the most important thing for top times. In this state case, uh, he does get that range uh, based on his special attack stats. Uh, it's just all those little things, those accumulations of experience help you to hit ranges, or it makes bad ranges better. Uh, it just allows you to have a lot more comfort in the run based on the higher experience that you're at. 
Yeah, JT, uh, no, no good bonuses spawned up at the top there. So JT just doing trainer skips where we just kind of abuse their vision and go around them. Very simple, very simple. And then here's the fight on Leggy's screen. Uh, goes with the two controller strats uh, with the Oddish in the active. And you're actually going to see a potion uh, off the bat for the Pikachu while the Oddish actually takes a front seat in this battle to get the one-shot Absorb. Yeah, we uh, Pikachu version will two-controller that fight. Um, you can just go in with Headbutt and hope for the 30% flinch, because I believe that Sandshrew knows Dig, and that will hurt. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, it's also a very good strat two-controller that in case you get poisoned in that fight. Yes, uh, in it the, does on have the rival fight uh, beforehand. So you can just kind of heal that up. But JT making their way to uh, Bill. Um, nobody has ditched Bill yet. Yeah, uh, pretty decent time for JT, I got to say, to make it at the 43 minute mark. Uh, JT's pace looks pretty good, even with the extra centering. Uh, probably has the comfort to know that he's a bit uh, ahead on pace compared to his competitors. Uh, yeah, no one. I don't think anybody's ditched Bill uh, just yet here. I think the only thing that JT is just maybe being a little hesitant about is that uh, he is two Pokemon behind compared to the other two. With just 13, basically got everything required, but nothing extra at the moment. Yeah, no bonuses, no no Pikachu in the forest, no Ekans, um, no Venonat, no Meowth. Uh, those are the only bonuses that uh, can exist this early, uh, but uh, we are coming up on the next big catching section for JT. So a couple of bonus things can spawn there. Uh, one of them is really, really good if you see it. Yeah. So we got route. It's route six. Yeah. And six pro six provides such an interesting challenge to the runners. Uh, and so I'd like to get your thoughts on this because you've run more EV in your days, right? Yes. So what are your thoughts on route six? when it comes to consistency. Because there's there's Vulpix and Jigglypuff, and you might see an Abra, but boy oh boy, don't the, doesn't the spawn rate always feel really bad on Route 6? I, I can, I've probably seen Abra one every like 15 runs. Like it's <laughs> very rare to see it. Uh, I feel like Jigglypuff is a lot rarer than it actually is. I always um, feel like Jigglypuff jumps so fast. It's actually a I'm not quite like I haven't gotten the if you're not paying attention. Yeah, I haven't gotten like the motion fast enough to like throw the ball right before it starts jumping because it it like does it like frame one for me and I'm like I'm not that fast on the Joy Cons. Yeah, that's that's how I feel. Um, the only difference though between the two versions is that instead of Vulpix, Pikachu gets to uh, catch Growlithe, which is a required catch. For them as the Growlithe becomes kind of the next uh the next partner Pokemon or like the the helper Pokemon like how Oddish was through this early section of the game Growlithe gets to take a starring role here so uh they actually have to catch it which does make it maybe a little bit nervous in case you're running back up and down the routes I believe uh one of our pace copy pastas was like 30 seconds is a lie it doesn't account for Spending 15 seconds running up and down Route 6 chasing a Growlithe. That's true. It doesn't when when the Growlithe runs off to Narnia and it's trying to make its way to Saffron City. You're like, no, come back, please, <laughs> please, please come back. Yeah, like, the Growlithe is surprisingly fast. Uh, what I find is that when you're on a ride Pokemon like Rapidash and you start moving, you have like that first wind up gallop, you know, where you accelerate from zero to top speed. Whereas wild Pokemon don't have that wind up, they are just no. They go from zero to sixty immediately. <laughs> <laughs> they're just always on the gas pedal. And if they're running away, <laughs> they're running fast. All right, JT about uh, to start. is the next to make it. Forty six isn't too bad again with fifteen Pokemon. No, that's pretty good for fifteen. Owl should be there shortly as well. Uh, just about, I'd say about a minute 30 off of uh, being in Bill's house. Yeah, just a little unfortunate to see poison on the coughing there and at four HP, no less. Well, they are definitely going to have to heal. 
uh, before the uh, the next fight. I, I have no idea what the fisherman's name is. Yeah, is it Wayne? I think it's I think Wayne. It's Wayne, yeah. Oh my God, that's a squirtle! Oh, there it is! There's a squirtle! Please, please, Alice! Oh, just dodging the pigeon. Oh Pidgey my God! A yes. Bit. Is this oh. going to be the first squirtle that we've seen in either tournament? Because there were no squirtle catches last year. This could be the first one ever. Squirtle is Perhaps insanely is rare on this route. Perhaps this is redemption day for the Chansey running away to get the tournament's first ever Squirtle. Nice, There's excellent. The throw. It's an excellence. A single great ball. I, I don't offhand. I don't know the odds of this. It's oh, let's not go. great, but and it's this, good enough. This is Squirtle actually worth is keeping in. too, because this evolves fairly quickly as well. Yeah, it should have been caught at about level 17. Uh, it might come as as low as 13 on this route, uh, but that is a solid two Pokemon catch. It's a rare spawn for Aloe. Absolutely, that is actually nuts. I, that's like the I, the first Squirtle we've seen like ever. Oh, are we going for? Oh, okay, no, we are gonna go for okay. Noxkin. That's whew. even even I don't go for. No, Edgy's the only person I know that goes for Noxkin. I think more and more people are getting pretty comfortable with Nox Skip. I'm actually quite, I'm, I'm personally surprised, but at the same time, I'm not surprised. Uh, to those unfamiliar, uh, Nox Skip is where uh, you uh, avoid that one spinner uh, on the bottom of the hedge maze. Uh, and instead of waiting two seconds, there's some pretty tight movement, but not impossible to just kind of sneak around everybody's vision. You don't have to wait for that cycle. Uh, if you're skillful enough at it, Go for it. It saves you two seconds. Uh, if not, you can just very safely wait those two seconds. Clean. And I, I held my breath to see JT uh, pass the uh, the Vermilion Trainer skip. Yeah, absolutely clean. Uh, that is widely regarded as the hardest skip in the game. It's, it's not pixel perfect, but it feels like it sometimes. Uh, if you go directly between those two trainers vision, uh, you can skip both of them. Um, not a big deal, especially on Eevee version, uh, not a big deal if you end up hitting one of those. They both only have one Pokemon. Eevee has a super effective move for both of them. Uh, on Pikachu, uh, the girl with a Charmander uh, is a lot better to hit than the, the boy with the Bulb with the, not a Bulbasaur. What does he have? A Bellsprout? The Bellsprout. Yeah, uh, that yeah there's, one... just something about, there's just something about grass types that's no fun for Pikachu. Grass and ground. Yeah. Get, ground, obviously, but the grass also is a little bit uh, funky. Yeah. Uh, one thing uh, we got to bring up last time I was on comms was uh, the whole setup for what JT is about to start doing here. Um, so on the Eevee version, uh, there, so there's an ether on Route 24 uh, that we skip on Eevee version, but Pikachu version picks it up. Um, they also, Pikachu also buys an X Defend um, and what this ends up doing is setting up that the last two items in our menu are the X attack and the X special attack, uh, which means they are one button press away from being able to set that up. And we call that God menu, where it's just one input to get to the X items to set up for any fights. Um, shout outs to Etchy for finding that. Leggy getting a uh, Growlithe, bit of a bit of a far away Growlithe, but uh, it does get it. <laughs> it just, just saw the very edge of the tail on the tail of the screen but leggy recognizing it uh so nice pick up there uh it is funny to note that between the two versions the x items are in the opposite spot yes uh, and it is be and it's because of how they are used through misty uh because they both buy x attacks and x special attacks in pewter uh but because they are used and used up in a different order it actually reverses how they are repopulated into the inventory so for those that run both the games they actually do have to just be careful and make sure that they are selecting the correct one because it is the opposite button press yes uh i, I said the static at last time I was on comms this game has the uh, strangest bag in the history of pokemon Mm -hmm. Like weird memory it's issues and stuff. Uh, Leggy getting a Jigglypuff. And JT starting and I, the rival fight. Uh, T Pat, you've been around long enough. Remember when this was a one controller fight? Um, Funny enough, uh, I actually don't. I've uh -oh. been around a long time, uh, but it has always been a two controller fight for me. Uh, you might have to ask uh, etiquette of the 
the true old guard uh, when it comes to those fights, but uh, there's still a lot of like legacy strats that are still out there, and the one controller Leggy, fight is on one Abra of them. For Night, yeah, two, there's Night, two Abras for Leggy. <laughs> woohoo! Night, yeah, nice, nice bonus pick up there. I can't even see uh, one in it like every 15 runs. He like, gets two. <laughs> Uh, and what makes the what makes the one controller strat a little bit funky is because of the threat of sand attack. Uh, you do have to lead guard spec if you do it one controller, uh, but with that way you can you can actually set up an X speed uh, instead, uh, and then just be able to sweep the fight. And then you don't you actually uh, outspeed the Pikachu as well. Yep. Um, so there's a lot of different ways to handle. Um, that and you might see the one controller strats in the tournament for those that are planning to run unrunnable EVs or minus speed EVs. They might have access to that uh, to to that me. one controller strat uh, just to bail themselves out of that minus speed situation. <laughs> Did you flinch when I flinched watching Lucky yeah. go through that? I do like. Uh, uh, it was a nice adjustment. It was a very nice adjustment yes. because she recognized she was too far to the left and just juked right to the right at the exact moment. So, I do like uh, uh, Leggy also perfect. waiting for the Rattata to uh, cross the road there before mm -hmm. starting. I would skip. have done that as well. <laughs> uh, there are some moments where I always feel like uh, if there are Pokemon in the way or like distracting. You can't flinch. You just you just ignore them and you just do your skip and you hit your mark. When they are right in the middle of the road, then it's like, okay. It's like, you do you. It's like, no, you can cross the road first. That's fine. I'm not in a hurry or anything. And uh, now Jeez. we'll see Owl also gets an Abra. Oh, <laughs> the crowd. We've seen just three quickly. Abras in this one tournament run. <laughs> Uh, and how many have you seen in the past year? Oh my god, maybe like three. <laughs> uh, Owl getting uh, instant Growlithe as well. Um, so both of our Pika runners getting Growlithe. That's a very important catch. Um, yeah, and it's important that they catch it first yes. as well. Because they'll catch it at level 17. And they do want it to get that one level up to 18. Uh, in order to uh, just have that extra damage, uh, Growlithe is extremely important for their runner for their run uh, because Growlithe comes with this very strong move known as Flamethrower, which is absolutely broken for a Pokemon like Growlithe. Oh. Uh, JT also getting the bonus uh, Return Trip Jigglypuff, which he did not have early on. Uh, and again, he was he was the one that has like the lowest catch count. So to see that even late is like good enough. We, we yeah, take this. The JT went for Pidgey uh, as well. So that does lock JT out of Pidgeot. Um, you can get Pidgey later on Route 17 and evolve it tw or evolve it twice, gain it two levels to get Pidgeot. So a uh, really good way to fix if you're like on an odd number or an even number, but. Uh, that is one thing to note that JT will be locked out of Pidgeot uh, for the rest of the run. The other two uh, runners do have that option. A nice glowing Jigglypuff from Owl as well. Uh, just a quick note for those that uh, are watching both races at the same time, or if you're not, uh, it was Sheep who just won uh, his race over on Yo, PSR TV. Won with a time of 3.09.27, so getting three match points for Sheep. An excellent win uh, over Razor and Rams. Yo, let's go. Uh, I actually believe that is War. Does that War Turtle level sixteen? I can't remember. It might be. 18. Yep, War Turtle would be level sixteen. It's actually it's actually quite simple uh, for the Kanto starters. They are all levels sixteen and thirty six. Or wait, uh, no, the, 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 the and final Evos except are except for Venusaur. Yeah, Venusaur gets Venusaur's thirty two. The one. Uh, it's not as weird as it was in Gen two. Because if I remember correctly, the Cyndaquil evolves at like 14, uh, but then uh, Typhlosion was still 36, uh, but like Tonadile was like 17 to yeah, evolve, but then it was a 32. I don't know what they were thinking in Gen 2. They, they were like, was, oh, this is like, backwards. we'll just do it weird. <laughs> Listen, it can be weird, but if we get Let's Go Johto, like no complaints. <laughs> I just I just want Let's Go Johto. That's all I want. I uh, also Owl, want uh, a little too far to the left there. Uh, clean skip I on like the way in. I like that. I like that adjustment, that recognizing that, you know, you're not really lined up correctly. And if you weren't confident in the mid run adjustment, you know, just take another stab at it. 
Uh, I personally like it when you're just holding the, the Joy-Con stick. Just You're just holding it down in the exact direction that you need. And if you can make a little adjustment, you can make a little adjustment. I don't necessarily like those that just tiptoe, like just they inch forward, because every time you take a stab at that Joy-Con, I feel like you could introduce some air. Whereas if you're just running straight, you're running straight. Yep. So that skip on the way in is a little more challenging. On the way out, you can uh, just line yourself up with the tiles uh, and just walk out of the town that way. But on the way in, there's not really anything to line yourself up with. There's like maybe like a dirt patch or something that you can kind of line up to. But uh, I know. on the way when in, it's I, much I, harder than on the way out. When I first learned it, I was told about Ooh, the dirt oh patch. Oh, man. Uh, like... I almost bought 19x special defense. <laughs> Nice correction. Yeah, I, I first learned with the dirt patch and like lining yourself up. Um, but I'm going to be honest. I just kind of eyeball it. From I do the here. same thing. I just, I just I, like, yeah, I that very looks like loosely just gloss over my eyes and be like halfway. Good. <laughs> yeah. Like I just look at it. I'm like, yeah, it looks about right. Yeah. Uh, so, which, you know, is, is, is pretty good. Uh, Alo <laughs> does not have uh, double moonstone. So we'll be depositing this Jigglypuff early. Um, I don't know if Leggy got double moonstone. I think JT did. Um, I didn't see. Uh, but we can check the catch tracker because if they have uh, any of the other moonstone Pokemon uh, marked as planned, uh, they might be planning on it. Uh, for JT, I do not see uh, either of the Nidos planned, so it looks like he did not get the double moonstone. Uh, on Leggy's side, it's just the Nido King as planned. Uh, it's the same thing for Alwo. So I don't think anybody did get the uh, double Moonstone. Just that nice single Moonstone pickup. I think it was from, it was either Alwo or Leggy when they were in the middle of the 20s, two bats all at once. Yeah, it was Alwo. I just thought that was a very, yeah, that was a very nice pickup. Uh, that unfortunately just for the first one though. JT evolving into Pidgeotto. So, Sai, as we hit the hour mark of this run, about a third way through the run, um, how are you How are you feeling about all the uh, runners right now? Their catch counts are pretty close. JT just catching up with 18 at this point. Owl actually having the highest catch count, uh, despite their, them being the farthest behind in plot. Uh, but how are you feeling about everybody's catch count as they're approaching that pivotal Route 10 section of the run? Yeah, this is uh, this is pretty much where good runs go to die. So you want that catch count to be very, very good for here. 18 is pretty safe uh, coming onto this route. Uh, JT getting an immediate Krabby, which is a very nice bonus. Yeah, uh, um, the, 20 the is... that you saw for JT, it wasn't that was an intentional hesitation. Yeah, you saw the Krabby, but he didn't encounter it immediately because you're actually trying to avoid getting on a catch chain. Even one Pokemon is a catch chain, and it increases the likelihood of that Pokemon. So if you just catch something immediately, the next three spawns could still be that same Pokemon. Uh, so actually just holding off for a second, allowing the Spearow to spawn, uh, just to make sure that you can get as diverse of a Pokemon population as possible. Yeah, every route in the game has like a kind of set number of Pokemon that uh, are allowed to spawn on it. Um, just, you know, just so it doesn't overload the game's like memory or something like that. So on Route 10, uh, you can have four Pokemon in that patch of grass at any point in time. So uh, some runners will just let all four of those Pokemon spawn in um, just so they don't, you know, just so they're not on a catch chain uh, when it comes in. So you don't like come in, catch a Rattata and you get four rats. Uh, and it's funny, JT did uh, confirm what I thought I saw, and that was a super-sized Krabby caught. And you know what that reminds me of? It reminds me of Gary's Krabby. That's <laughs> a bigger Krabby. Yeah, Ash was so proud when he ca caught his Krabby, and Professor Oak's just like, oh, check out Gary's Krabby. It's just like twice its size. It's just oh, that, yeah, that that's the one JC caught. It's that giant oh, yeah. Krabby that's just in that like glass case. <laughs> yeah, that EV is 23. Okay, yeah, that was a big, big crab. And it was in a nice spot too, because he only had two Pokemon in the party. So, I mean, not as impactful as the Chansey per se. It's also very uh, good that uh, JT caught the Krabby first too, because Krabby actually, I believe, takes four levels to evolve. Uh, most yes. of the Pokemon we catch take one to three. Um, so yeah, uh, it's, getting it's it all party one. Early, very good. Yeah, it's actually a, such a funny mix because on Route 10, 
Uh, the the Ratata, the Spiro, and the Nidorans all take one, and then it's the Krabby that takes four. But then in Rock Tunnel, you have an opposite situation where only the Zubat takes one, and everything else that you would catch would take four. The Cubone and the Machop take yep. four levels. Those will evolve uh, towards Route 17 uh, after uh, all of our runners get those. Or just get a super-sized Graveler. <laughs> That's the easiest way <laughs> then all to your, do it. Then, yeah, then uh, all your problems Owl, are fixed. Oh no, is that Pidgey going to get in the way? Nope, all right. No, nope, perfect. Nice concentration. Out. Love that focus there. Clean on the way out. Uh, Leggy going to put on the lure and uh, get ready to head into this route here. I'm uh, going to dodge this black belt dude. Uh, he has an Onyx, if I remember correctly. Yeah, both these trainers are actually kind of scary to hit. Oh, there's a Chansey <laughs> for Leggy. <laughs> There's a Chansey. Uh, if you remember, uh, though, Leggy already yeah, has, Leggy has a one. Chansey caught. So that one will not be caught. It is the second Chansey of the run. Uh, funny enough, this Nidoran male, very much excited to uh, be caught running into her character. Uh, it's actually, this is actually great because the Nidoran is uh, wanted first. It is almost a required catch for the Pikachu runners because like how Oddish was in the early game and Growlithe was in this last route, now Nidoking is going to be the main support Pokemon for the Pikachu side. Uh, and catching it first is actually best because now it's going to get the most possible experience through Route 10, through Rock Tunnel, and into the hideout section where it will be used. Yep, like you're getting the evolution on the... Abra, so I believe Leggy will be able to dump a majority of their party. Owo starting the... Uh, this is the Eevee fight. Uh, this is Picnicker Alicia. And... Low attack there on the Eevee. Did miss the KO there. Uh, Leggy deciding what to go for. Wanting to let more things spawn in. Is going to go for the Krabby. I think Leggy needs at least one more thing here before it's safe to go. JT caught Krabby, so can probably leave the route now, honestly. And just go yeah, let's... meter and female. Yeah, with with Krabby, and that's easily uh, that can be easily replaced. Uh, because you got you have to think of it this way: like the Spearow and the two Nidorans are kind of like the exclusive ones of the route, and then Krabby's the bonus. Uh, Rattata can also spawn, but Rattata can spawn in many other locations, so it's not vital to catch here. Um, and if you're on kind of like an okay catch count, you really want three of those four. That's at least how I always compartmentalize it in my brain. Uh, in this case, with that Krabby, uh, JT did get three out of the four, uh, basically just missing out on Nidoran, but getting the bonus Krabby. So he's still even... He's still on his plan 50 catch count with everything else equal. So I think this is fine. Spent enough time on the route. Uh, no need to go back up uh, just for another, uh, just for one more possible catch, basically. Yeah, did let everything on the route spawn in just to check to see. Because if it does spawn, it's great because then you're up, uh, you're up to Pokemon and you can kind of cut something later in the run. Uh, but unfortunately, none of those spawned in for JT. So just going to move on, yeah. going to do the rocket fight and uh, continue on on the path. Meanwhile, Leggy, who's at 23 right now, has not yet caught a uh, Spiro or Nidoran female, but does also have a Krabby. Uh, we'll probably wait for one more thing to spawn. You kind of want one or the other, uh, but Leggy obviously does have the uh, Nidoran male. I wonder if we're going to see a uh, Repel Relure from Leggy, which might not be a bad idea here. Uh, because only four things can spawn in this patch of grass. Uh, their Spearow was on the screen, so that is nice uh, to see immediately. Yeah, so Leggy is good to kind of move on now. Um, if the Nidoran spawns, great. Um, if not, we can just keep on moving. Yep, in fact, Leggy just updated uh, their tracker. Uh, it did remove Nidoran female, but is still at 50 planned. Uh, in fact, it says 54 plans, yeah, so uh, looks, lo it looks like Leggy is more than good enough to be moving on. Yep. 
Uh, JT entering Rock Tunnel. Uh, this is one of the sections where a lot of th very important Pokemon need to spawn here. Um, on the EV side, we want to see Rhyhorn uh, almost instantly. The Pika version can... It can live without Rhyhorn, but it still would like to see it. Mm-hmm. Um, but Most Pokemon, importantly, because it's the ride out, Pokemon. Unfortunate. Yeah, that's a 91% uh, breakout. And now it's moving side what? to side. And, oh, what a weird <laughs> set of throws there, where it actually it's only collected with one. Is this going to get in? in? It is. It's only going to be a one controller catch. <laughs> but, of course, that's the one that gets in. Whatever it stayed in, that's all that matters. Uh, Owl <laughs> getting uh, uh, Nidor and female. First Nidor and female we've seen of the run. Yeah, I'll just getting started with Route 10 actually looked like a pretty good sequence here. So um, we'll check back in with Owl's catch rate. They have 56 planned right now, uh, and they have been doing the best in terms of their catch count. Remember, uh, they were the ones with the Sandshrew and the Mankey early. Uh, the they also have the Abracadabra. So they're definitely in really good shape. So you kind of just want one pass at Route 10 and then be like, all right, I'm moving on from here. I can actually cash in on having the highest catch count through this section of the run. Yeah, so Owl uh, looking like they're gonna pick up uh, some things here going after this, uh, the Spiro, it's kind of uh, trying to head towards the power plant. It's actually kind of the weirdest uh, situation here for Owl, uh, caught Nidoran female, Spiro, and there's um, Rattata on screen, as well as a Nidorino, but not Nidoran male. Yeah. Uh, Nidorino is fine if you want to get to Nido King. Uh, you'll still learn Helping Hand. I think there's a different move set though like you do that you have to be aware jab. of. Yeah, that being the most important move. Yeah, the Helping Hand I believe is also in the, a different slot as well. I think it's slot two? Yeah. It's that, also funky. Since. It was also funky to see that Nidorino literally start booking it off to the left. Um, but there's an odd situation here because Owl might just go for Nido Queen strats, uh, which are just fine as well. I wouldn't say that they're any worse than Nidorino are. Um, but we might also see what is known as like a backup strat where if you do this fight first with Lorelei, uh, it also counts as kind of like a like a reset of the route, uh, so it's a it's a free repel uh, and you, and a refresh of those Pokemon. So I might still go back up and see if they can spot a Nidoran male. Oh, there's a, a more Rhyhorn over there for JT. Yep, uh, looks like this should be better. Or there's an one full survive. <laughs> I was just about to say, I think you have more than enough time to go get that Rhyhorn, which was not in danger of like crossing that trainer's vision. Uh, but just to have one spot a bit closer to you is uh, also great. Uh, Rhyhorn being the first ride Pokemon that we see of the day, just has a faster move speed. Uh, it's actually pretty decently fast. It's definitely not the XY Rhyhorn that goes no. through the mud. Uh, much quicker than that. Uh, it can save about a minute or so through the course of the run, about 45 seconds to a minute in terms of ride speed. Uh, JT kind of got it in about the middle of Rock Tunnel in total and not like immediately at the entrance. So it kind of has a very average uh, Rhyhorn spawn on his side. Uh, but more importantly, uh, Eevee actually now makes use of Rhyhorn as a partner fighting Pokemon. Uh, used mainly in the upcoming Jesse and James fight, uh, and that can be a big, big help. So not getting Rhyhorn not only loses out on movement speed, but can also lose you a turn or two through the course of the next section of the game. Everything just all lining up together uh, in this very complicated mid-game. Oh, Owl. Uh, meanwhile, <laughs> Owl not only getting the instantaneous Rhyhorn spot, but also the 1% Kangaskhan a on AOP screen. AOP runners in shambles right now. They sure are. So it'll be uh, every, interesting everyone to see Everyone has a Rhyhorn on screen right now. <laughs> uh, J JT's is just the, the NPC one, but uh, does actually have Rhyhorn. Uh, the Pika version, you can live without Rhyhorn uh, for the ride Pokemon. Um, because we do get that Growlithe, uh, there is actually a free Firestone on the ground 
uh, on the way to Celadon. Uh, the EV version. Wh what? <laughs> oh my I, goodness! That I was have so, so many questions. Thoughts, side by side for JT. That is unbelievable. <laughs> and he's JT's gonna go gonna for go it. For Actually, it summons the second controller. JT is in the zone right now. Oh, odd cycle. Good Focuses excellent. in, gets the JT excellent just throw. Going for it. Okay. Three shakes and in Kangaskhan caught for oh, JT. This, this this race, <laughs> we have seen some weird <laughs> stuff. Uh Squirtle and Kangaskhan. Okay. And uh, and a couple chances, one caught, one running. Yeah, this has been a wild run. Uh, in fact, so so Leggy has the uh, Bulbasaur. Yeah, I was gonna bring this up. Squirtle. I didn't want to say anything because I don't want to jinx it. But we are one starter away <laughs> from having the trio in this race. Yeah, I didn't want to jinx it because I'm like, no. Like I'm not trying one. to influence anyone's decision in the race, but JT, if you see a Charmander, please catch it. Oh, we gotta go for it. Uh, oh, it's just a grappler. Was... I, 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 cannot, I cannot believe not one, but two Kangaskhan spawned. <laughs> <laughs> AOP running is absolutely, absolutely incredible. Right Uh, this is I, I remember when draws were uh, announced via the slots, of course. I um, this was one of the races that I looked at and was like, this has got to be a good one. Like we've got we've got three solid runners. We got three solid memers. And I think the game hurt us because this has been a fun and wild ride. Yeah, this one has been super good. Hmm. <laughs> Uh, and between all that, JT's actually having a pretty solid run, despite the uh, despite the the misty near death experience. Uh, has actually been locked in. Is having a pretty solid run overall, uh, even with some of the out of the way memes. I don't think he absolutely needed to go for that Kangaskhan. Could have been like, okay, okay, this is a little funky, uh, but in it for the contents. And we're here for it. We are loving that. We appreciate the content. Uh, and he's still just barely on pace for 50. Uh, JT is still going to keep that lure active, by the way. Uh, even though he's on, he's nearing the end of the uh, tunnel section of the game, still has not caught a Machop. Uh, yeah. So it starts to get a lit. He's starting to tread water a little bit more lightly here, uh, in terms of uh, your catch count. Uh, but the Eevee learning gotten... double edge, Did which is pretty Cubone? nice at this stage of the game. Did they get Cubone? Um, they do not have it marked yet. Okay. So, so if they're missing two, they might want Ooh. to actually good good spinner pass there. <laughs> A good spinner pass just took an extra second to just recognize what direction he was looking. Okay, that's one of them. Right, that's the Machop. Uh, by the way, not to not to tout my own horn here, but I finally got a Tower Cubone for the first time in my career this week. <laughs> uh, like like I've seen Tower Cubone before, but I've always caught it and be like, okay, I didn't catch the Tower Cubone. Or in the runs where I didn't get Tunnel Cubone, I never saw it. I finally got that. Uh, I missed tower, or I missed tunnel cubone, and then it spawned in tower, and I was, I, was, I, I thoroughly popped off. <laughs> JT getting a uh, motion controller again there, only getting a uh, one ball Machop, but does stay in. Um, I think at some point needs to uh, do some party management here and dump this Kangaskhan out because Kangaskhan does not evolve. It does Mega? <laughs> does not evolve. Well, there are Mega Stones in the game. All right, trivia question for chat. Where do you get the, the Kangaskhan Ites? Yeah, Owl losing Pikachu here. Probably will have to... In, so in these situations, I uh, usually like to recommend to a lot of beginner runners, uh, especially in these random fights, if you die, revive and then just summon that second controller. 
uh, because it can just be the easiest way to bail bail yourself out of an odd situation, as yep. we are seeing right here. So now you're you're kind of back to normal. It'll be a little bit slower than optimal, but it allows you to set up uh, quite a bit cleaner uh, while eliminating the amount of risk uh, and damage that had already been done. So yep. uh, a nice recovery here from Owl, recognizing to just revive, summon second controller, and then move on. Yep, not the worst. <laughs> So JT out of uh, tunnel, uh, 117 tunnel exit, uh, not bad with uh, 30 catches too. So uh, mm -hmm. JT can do a, a decent chunk of uh, management here on cutting stuff. So I would say that 30 on the catch count is uh, how you say, okay. <laughs> right? It's, it's not amazing, but it's not like the worst thing in the world. It's okay. Yeah. The yeah. the biggest the biggest whiff here is the Cubone, um, but it can remain marked as it can spawn in tower uh, and is technically more optimal in tower because if you do catch it there, it is now a one level evolution instead of four. Obviously, you would never bank on waiting for it, uh, but it is always an option that it can show up later. The only problem is I'm looking at his catch route and it is pretty tight. Yep. Uh, he has everything listed, including Tentacle, including Coughing, and including Cubone, and is still just at 50 planned at the moment. So needs to quite literally catch everything. And Cubone is far from guaranteed at this section of the game. So uh, I'll be most interested to see how he's going to be able to recover maybe those last two Pokemon. Yeah, I mean, there's a couple things we could do. Uh, you know, there's Magmar, we we'll always go for as a backup. Uh, I will say this, I did just notice he does not have Kangaskhan Mart. So JT is at 31. Yeah. So, and that one catch can make a big, big difference because there are a lot of single Pokemon that are available. There is Kangaskhan, uh, not just Kangaskhan, but uh, there's Mad Mark. Uh, <laughs> Ditto can JT show up. because they just marked uh, Kangaskhan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, for, for our viewing audience to make sure that our catch counts are all accurate, we're just trying to uh, help uh, everybody out uh, as they can. <laughs> so, uh, 51 there for... Uh, JT. So what they could do is add nine tails in because they are at an odd number. Uh, it's kind yeah. of like a weird. You can either get that single catch, that Magmar or nine tails, yeah. uh, instead of Cubone. Um, but it, that feels a little bit safer than being like, oh, I need Cubone or I need Magmar and nine tails. Uh, in addition to quite literally everything else. Yeah. Uh, that uh, one catch some, does make a difference. There are some good opportunities here, actually. Um, I'd be interested to see if JT maybe cuts the bush um, to uh, check out what's around the Firestone area. Might be an Abra uh, there. Um, yeah, and don't forget Route 7 is uh, an option, too. You do get to see some pretty quick spawns, and thankfully Route 7 spawns in a lot better than Route 6. Yes. Uh, <laughs> So you always have that. Uh, I personally like, if I'm in this situation, uh, I'll just look at Route 7 twice. Like, I'll see what originally spawns and then just hit the guardhouse and come back out to just quickly refresh those four spawns, knowing that the spawn rate is pretty good in that region. Uh, meanwhile, Leggy is actually doing pr really good on catch count. 33 with the... Uh, 33 with a 120 exit. 33 is excellent. 33 uh, for the catch with count. 54 plans, so she can cut two, four Pokemon. Yeah, my I've recommendation in, the, in this case. Well. Yeah, Tentacool is my first one to it's cut. The first thing I cut and then too. from there, yeah, and then from there, it's just I I can cut one more thing. Um, like if you don't see Ghastly, then that's the thing that you cut. If you don't see Sida, then that's the thing you cut. You just kind of take it from there. Uh, they do already have coughing removed. Uh, so I think they're anticipating just, you just catch the Pokemon as you see them. And then when you're done, you stop. Um, as long as Tentacool is one of the things that you're anticipating on cutting in the first place. JT does go through the bush, but does not pick up the Firestone. So 
Maybe just thinking, you know, I can get that Firestone later and match it. Yeah, probably cutting the bush just to see, like, well, if there's an Abra in there, I'll go for it. Um, or if there's something I haven't gotten yet, I'll grab it. But um, nothing there. Would so you just running through it? Would you catch Nine Tails if it spawns in this next patch of grass? Would I catch it? Man, it would you? It's like a one percent. What's its catch rate? Like it, it is a one percent spawn. It can't be good. I've never calculated. Yeah, I've never <laughs> but yeah, I've like, never calculated it before. I'm like how how desperate are we on this catch route? <laughs> like, uh, well, let's find out. Here? JT route seven, and we have. <laughs> Did nothing spawn in tunnel like at all? Uh, ooh, like I only saw eradicate and Vulpix. Yeah, uh, JT does opt to hit the guardhouse. Oh, and oh, oh I can't believe it's a nine tail spawn. He's gonna go for it. One percent nine tails on screen. Oh my Ultra god, we we're actually doing this. There was a we're reason. We're gonna double he didn't ultra this up. too. He's gonna go for double ultra. This is not a bad play because you can always pick up the next batch of ultra balls that are in rocket hideouts. Oh, double Let's extra. See. I have no clue what this is. Three shakes. Oh, let's it's go. in! JT catches a natural nine tails on route seven. <laughs> that's that's good experience, too, actually. Yeah, that looks pretty nice. Oh, wow. That's uh, this is a run. This race. This is great. Uh, and what's nice is that paired with his Kangaskhan were the two catches he needed to put him back on even. And now he doesn't need the Cubone in tower to get to 50. Uh, JT does need to put the Machop in the party, however, because right now it is not in the party. <laughs> uh, we actually still I have not seen... I have not seen uh, Kingler evolve this early in a no. while either. <laughs> Usually you have Kingler uh, either sometime on 17 or uh, towards the end of uh, towards the end of Mansion or not the Mansion yeah. sorry, hideout. Yeah. So the JT tower. recognizing that we do need to put Machop in the party. Uh, just going to go ahead and uh, dump the Evos. And this is a nice spot, too, because if you notice that it was three things that were clogging up the party. Just needed to manage at some point anyways. Yep. So that doesn't mean Macho might evolve a little bit later because it missed out on uh, some experience, but uh, should get it sometime on Route 17. Uh, here's where we're going to learn Glitzy Glow uh, for the Eevee version. Pika is not going to learn any moves here. Uh, the moves that Pika can get later in the game are just nowhere near as good as Zippy Zap. Um, you might think something like uh, Surf plus like was it paralysis or something? Is that is that what the other effect is? Surf. surf. Oh, sorry. I was I was <laughs> I was honestly just looking at JT's catch route. Yeah, and I think it's Surf. I think that. it's like Surf and you can get paralyzed or something. Like those moves are just not very good for Pika version. Oh yeah, like yeah, like the the floaty fall is like yeah, it's sur it's it's like water type bounce. If I remember correctly. Yeah, it's the, the the problem is that we don't get it till the, the the water type one is actually in fuchsia. That's where the fly one is. Uh, the fly ones in Celadon. That's just not very useful for us. So uh, it's only EV version going to learn a move here. And we get to learn uh, Glitzy Glow, which is a very useful move uh, for the rest of the game, because we're about to go up against a bunch of poison types. Yeah, the psychic type move that also sets up light screen as its secondary effect. Uh, not a useless secondary effect, uh, effect in fact. No. Uh, when we see a bunch of wheezings on the screen, uh, it'll be very nice to know that uh, the light screen will have the damage from its sludge bomb or dark pulse most oftenly used from those attacks. Uh, but yes, primarily used to hit super effective against all the poison types that we will now encounter during the rocket section of the run. Uh, the other move, Batty Bad, the dark type move, is the opposite. It is a reflect, uh, which is not nearly as useful, again, for the for the context of the speed run. No. All right, bonus points if you know what the secondary effects of the grass, ice, and fairy moves are. I'll give you a hint. The ice move does not always freeze. Which is a little sad to say, but it unfortunately does not. 
Oh god, doesn't the fairy move? God, I don't remember them off hands. <laughs> yeah, the, the grass move know, isn't is... Isn't the EB one uh, called, like, Swirly Swirl or something? The fairy oh, one? Is it, wait, is it really called Swirly Swirl? <laughs> Sparkly Swirl, sorry. Sparkly <laughs> Is it... Swirly I forget swirl what the ice move is also, also called. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, we don't get to use uh, VV Volley at any point in the run. Uh, yeah, I had not. one. It is like the hidden fifth move, but I think you need maximum In max friendship. friendship. We're just we don't even you we need don't even friendship. want like we, we don't even <laughs> want to get friendship up in this game. It's it's max friendship, but the the move is like return, right? It's just that high base powered normal type move, if I remember correctly. Yeah. Uh, Pika Pika has a better name anyway. It's Pika Papau. It is Pika Papau. Yeah. Oh my god, I just looked up like I just looked up what the grass move does, and this move would be so slow in a speedrun. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. It's a really good move, but it's very slow. Yeah, it's a it's the leech seed setup, yeah. isn't it? <laughs> We'd like to welcome in our viewers from PSR TV One. Uh congratulations to Sheep for winning that race. Uh you have all walked in on a very hype but very memed up run uh in fact just most recently jt caught a nine tails that's right on route it. seven jt caught a nine tails and is just barely on 50 planned uh this is also the first run in either tournament in the history of this tournament where a squirtle has been caught on stream Aloe catching that Route 25 Squirtle a bit earlier on in the race. Leggy does have a Bulbasaur and a Chansey. And oh, by the way, JT also caught a Kangaskhan in this run, and they were side by side. This has been quite a run. Sai, what has been your favorite part of this run so far? This, there has been some crazy this, catches. This run has been, like, insane. <laughs> There's been so much wild, like, crazy <laughs> meme stuff. Uh-oh, uh... Including uh, this Grimer setting up uh, minimize. minimize. That's bad. Yeah, can we? Oh, oh, oh JT here. getting trolled. Can oh we... yeah, we did okay, have a shiny G dude in this run. And oh, all yeah, of that, totally I forgot, forgot that, that there was a shiny in this run. <laughs> <laughs> this, this run in this race has been crazy. We forgot about the shiny Geo dude. <laughs> you see double Kangaskhan and Nine Tails, and you're like, oh yeah, there was a shiny Geo dude. Uh, that was also for Owl. Yeah. This this run this run has been something. There there will be many many a clip from the of this race uh, in the highlight. Reel. Yeah, in fact, we're we're probably just gonna replay this race in its entirety <laughs> as the highlight reel for round three because this is what you all deserve. <laughs> uh, Phoenix asking if Allo caught the uh, the shaggy yeah, dude. Um, yeah, Allo's like, of course. Other, <laughs> unlike other speedrunners. Some people actually appreciate it when they get a shiny show up on their screen. Not only was it a catch, it was actually a duplicate yeah. uh, Geodude catch for them, but still absolutely it's a shiny. worth it. Yeah, Can't it's worth shiny. more than a nugget, allegedly. I, I'd ha it's it's like a nugget with arms. I would I would think it's worth quite a lot more. <laughs> so Alo going to be the last person to set up the, uh, the nature uh, Miss Celadon. Is that her name? I don't. I don't know. I, I, I didn't even have said know her name on stream name. before. I and I, it, it, the, it was such a bland name. I thought she was the psychic or the Madam Chandler. Celadon. That was it, Madam Celadon. <laughs> Listen, my notes only have better. the names of the trainers. Uh, they don't have the names of just the NPCs you talk to. Yes. Like, for example, that that guy on Route Three. He's just the Magic Carp guy. He's just the Magic Carp. He's the Magic Carp salesman. Yeah, and the game makes fun of you when you buy the Magic Carp too. Like you paid outrageous you... money, and I'm like, I'd pay yeah, this no, all day. Outrageous five hundred. Yeah, I'd like absolutely pay this money. It's a steal. What? I can't wait for the day that I get a shiny Magic Carp from him, and I'm like, outrageous what now? <laughs> yeah, I know. Because the gift Pokemon can be shiny, so the Magic Carp, the Lapras, and the Porygon can be gifted to you shiny. 
same with the uh, the Canto starter gifts that we do not see in this category, uh, but we do see them in other categories. The the uh, the Bulbasaur is a possible fiftieth backup if you add like if I guess if so many things went wrong in that run that you just were like, nah, oh. I just resetting is boring. <laughs> can't even think of a world where you would go pick up the uh, Bulbasaur, but you could do it in any percent. Could you? You need it, 33 catches. 30, like, 30 catches. Physically Pokemon cause. Theoretically, I can't imagine we don't hit 30. Like, well, if well, so many Pokemon are like two evolutions. Like, I don't even think we hit like. I think we barely hit 25, eight. to be honest. Because the bugs are two catches for six Pokemon, so you're already behind. He's doing math. I am <laughs> so, actually. Sai si, si has gone away. <laughs> I've distracted him. He's doing 19, math now. 20, 21, <laughs> 20, 23, uh, JT getting a nice JJ five. fight, successfully using uh, the Rhyhorn to KO the Arbok and hitting through Paralysis to make this a two-turn fight, which is usually not common for the Eevee side. If you use only the Sully Glitzy Glow strats, you would need incredibly high special attack to make that work. So a nice little uh, pick up there. So so you uh, theoretically could get the Bulbasaur. Okay. You would also be at 52, but you could theoretically oh. get it. <laughs> so, something went well, catastrophically go wrong in the run, like your start. tracker died. But sir, but sir, you already have 52 Pokemon. I don't care. I want the Bulbasaur. I want the now. Bulbasaur. You could. I want to, you I want to specifically either, show that it's Bulbasaur. It's either 52 or Koda 53. And Erica. You'd either be at like 52 or 53. You'd be over the 50 mark uh, if you if you got the Bulbasaur. But you could theoretically go if you get like every bonus. Uh, but if you get remember, every bonus, you don't need the Bulbasaur anyway. So I remember first learning this game and be like, why do we not get the gift Bulbasaur or the gift Charmander? They're just right there. And then I learned about the the I, physical catch I thought the same thing as well. I was like, don't in yellow version, don't this guy, doesn't this guy just hand this to you like for free? Like, yeah, why sure does. This? Yeah. No, they lock it behind you having to catch Pokemon. Who would know? Who would think that a game based <laughs> off of Pokemon Go, which the only mechanic in that game is catching Pokemon, that this game would be based around a mechanic that involves <clears throat> catching Pokemon <laughs> and a lot of them. I don't know, sounds unheard of for me. Anyways, Leggy is now on the Jesse and James fight. This looks similar, except you'll notice that the Pikachu is not on screen. This is where Nito King and Rhyhorn get to do the dirty work for the Jesse and James fight. It will start off the same way with the drill run against the Arbok, uh, a favorable range, but the difference here is that the plus four or the helping hand plus two drill run is a quite a bit worse of a range against Rhyhorn. Uh, against the Weezing, unfortunately. And that's where Eevee kind of says, wait a second, I have Glitzy Glow. And then the Drill Run and the Glitzy Glow get to do the combo work. That's a nice pickup from Leggy, though. Getting the two-turn Jesse and James fight, because this is a double turn, each additional turn can be quite a bit longer. So that is a nice, clean two shots for Leggy. And on the Pikachu side, no doubt. Absolutely, definitely. Uh, the other thing to note too, Owl is actually out of Zippy Zaps. Oh, that's so weird. Yeah, Owl being out of Zippy Zaps, so we'll have to rely on Thunderbolt uh, for the rest of this section. Is there a bed in the hideout? I always, I don't know why, but I always feel like most evil team hideouts have beds in them. I don't think there is in hideout. There's one in, uh, I know there's one in um, Silphco. Silphco, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I don't uh, think there's mentioning one in, in chat that they're going to use the Ether, uh, which is not a bad play because you can always pick up the Max, Max Elixir, Elixir yes. in uh, Mansion. So I think that's a, that's a smart backup. Okay, yeah. So we'll lose God Menu for just that one single section, but um, not the end of the world. Uh, we lose God Menu after this section anyway, so... Um, not mm -hmm. a not a big deal. 
And it can always happen for a number of reasons, not just using the ether, but say if you had to use all your antidotes or if you had to use yeah. your burn heals, your awakenings, like even or even all your potions. Could, uh, uh, could even losing one could technically keep God menu by picking up the uh, max revive that's in the room with Giovanni. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so there's there are ways around it. Yeah. Uh, JT uh, making their way out of hideout has gotten through the Giovanni fight. I'm going to pick up the stack of ultras because uh, they decided to catch a nine tails and a, a Kangaskhan. <laughs> and I don't, I'm not, I'm not sure JT is aware of what category they're playing, but the, the only thing that's funky about this is that um, with the extra stack, you'll end up with 13 total ultra balls. But if you noticed, uh, he did go for double ultra ball on the nine tails. So either he'll be throwing two ultra balls at the same time on all the coming Pokemon or he's going to manually switch back to Great Ball uh, for the second controller, just to conserve a lot of those. Yeah, you want Ultras for, like, the last couple catches of the route. Um, JT on fairly good pace now on the catch route. The Ninetales actually fixing a lot of things, uh, funnily enough, uh, along with the Kangaskhan catch. Um, so JT on fairly good pace. Uh, catch route can make one cut. Um, still has Cubone marked, so uh, likely that will be the thing that gets cut, but does need everything to spawn in from here on out, or, or we'll have to go for some weird stuff like Ditto, Magmar, uh, Tangela. So um, hopefully the Cubone spawns in. Well, hopefully both Cubone and Ghastly spawn in, and uh, we won't have to worry. Uh, JT won't have to worry about weird catches uh, for the rest of the Okay. Round. Here's the next question. To lure or not to lure in Pokemon Tower? I that skipped is the, question. the lure. I also skipped the lure. And oh. I got I got Tower Cubone unlured <laughs> this week. So uh, I'm a lure hater in Pokemon Tower. I think I, it's a lie. I just don't. I used to lure. And then I always felt like it was just a waste of a lure. And I'm like, why am I even doing this? Like, I should just fly <laughs> there. And then... I just stopped luring entirely, and I'm like, yeah, no, this is just better. Oh, there's... Oh, Whoa, JT, is he gonna, I JT think gonna no, go I, back for it! Okay, a little little bit of a maze, a little bit of a maze, a little bit of a runaround, All but right, remember, so JT JT's, really needs every single spawn. Yeah, so, so JT's I think this catch is route actually fine now. Very likely to see everything else... Uh, okay, well... Uh, getting motion yeah, controlled. Yeah, this is, this is a bit of an awkward situation. I think he's going to want to do like this car wheel type of throw. Oh, that Ghastly's in such a terrible spot. And even the Nana oh, Berry wears like off, which jump. looked like it was going to be great. But now he's lost four Ultra Balls on this. Okay, that's a bit of a safer spot for that Ghastly to, to spawn All in. Right, that should be good to stay in. There are three more Ultras uh, in Tower to pick up, so... Uh, JT should have enough ultras for the rest of the run. Uh, so this, this is worth noting out that on the Tentacool or coughing, but um, those should be fine with double greats. Well, not the Tentacool because that's a single great, but uh, the mm -hmm. coughing should be fine with double greats. So this is worth noting that uh, even for experienced runners, like being solid with how you do your throws is so important in the run. Uh, obviously, like the straightaway throws, the straight down, you know, slap your lap uh, are the easy ones. And then everybody learns the side throws. Uh, there is a weird technique you can do for those halfway, you know, the Pokemon that jump to the side, but not kind of fully halfway. And then they're in that awkward spot where they're not fully to the side. They're not straight down the center. Uh, for me, how I do it, it's like a... It's not like an opening of the curtain, as etiquette would put it. You know, you open the curtain is how you would do a side throw. It's more like a it's more like a big steering wheel motion uh, from the elbow, where it, it's halfway steering wheel and then halfway uh, curtain open. Yeah, and I find that that is how I get my halfway to the side. Throws. Yeah, that's kind of how I do it too. Where it's like you're you, from like the elbow, you just kind of like flick it to the left or flick it to the right. Yeah, while well, kind of holding the Joy-Cons uh, parallel to your chest. Yes. Instead of oh, instead of opening your arm, you keep it in that plane. It's it's hard to describe when you're not on camera. I'm like yeah. physically holding the Joy-Cons <laughs> right now, doing the motion, be like, yeah, do it I'm like doing this. the motion too. <laughs> like this is how I do it. Listen to my words and do it like this. <laughs> 
Uh, Leggy has now. But made I, I know, it. I know you know <laughs> how I'm doing. It. Yeah, it's just like I can't. I like we're not on camera, so we can't show it. <laughs> this is the moment. Well, you're on tech, so I mean. Uh, that's true. I do have the work. power to add my <laughs> webcam. Yeah. Uh, we, we just we just get little inlets like near the timing part of the screen. In fact, like our faces just come up over the Pikachu and the Eevee. And it's like, oh, it's like this. Don't, don't give me ideas for next year. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I know you've been doing such you've been doing such great production work this year. I mean, you're going to Hawaii in a couple months. Uh, yes, uh, I will. I will be at the Pokemon World Championships in a few months. So uh, yeah, uh, pretty exciting. So this will be my ninth Worlds. I think Damn, I think it's like that's amazing. Hold on. Hold on. Uh, Hold on, I'm trying to think because I did 04. How many of those as a competitor? Because you've been on the VGC side for a while. Yeah, I have. I want. I did go as a competitor in 2016, and then 17. Oh, 18, like 19. you just getting hit by an optional right there. Oh, just missed optional? the cycle. Is um, this the? Is this the? Oh, uh, this is the ghastly the, lady. Yeah. Yeah, this is one of the last. Of the, JT, I listen. I know you ran into this haunter. <laughs> And you've and you've caught a nine tails. Yeah, no, we're good. We're good. We we've this got was, a lot of memes. To be fair, it did it did spawn on him. Um, uh, but yeah, you you say you went you've gone as a competitor, which yes, is so cool. 2016, I was a competitor at the World Championships. It was uh, Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire uh, GS Cup. Uh, format was not great. It was very <laughs> very. <laughs> Not, not a good format. <laughs> uh, every other year uh, I've gone as a, as a staff member. So. That is that is so, so cool. Have you ever, like, wondered or, like, it, like shower thought or, like, in your wildest dream be like, man, what if speedrunning was, like, part of the world championships? Oh, oh I've, Have you asked, ever imagined I've asked it? For, like, this kind of stuff on, like, side events for a while. Um, they've done they've done a couple. Over in Europe there was a, a speedrunning thing uh, for, like, Get to Brock in, like, Gen 1. Um, and I think one year at NAIC, they did a, um, uh, it was, like, Rotom Rally, where it was just, like, the Rotom Rally speedrun rules. Oh, yeah. Uh, unfortunately, yeah, cool. I was working the event, so I couldn't go play in it, but <laughs> um, I was very uh, happy to see that on, like, the side events list. I, I have it I have it on good merit that our good friend Halkery, uh was at NAIC just, a, what was it, a couple weekends ago. And there was the they had a they had a little booth of Legends Arceus, uh, and they said he got uh, I think he said they he said they got all the way to like Lilligant before they finally like tapped him on the shoulder and said okay that's enough. So yeah, at, at, at NAIC it wasn't I don't think that was in the main hall if I remember right the Nintendo booth where they had like all the game demos and stuff out there uh, was actually like outside like the convention center like in the hall. Uh, Nintendo set up like different little uh, like things for like all their games, except for Let's Go. That was the one that wasn't set up. I was very upset about that. <laughs> um, but they did have all that, so uh, I'm not surprised. <laughs> yeah, got um, that far. imagine playing for like just an hour and getting to Ursaluna. <laughs> getting like almost, and then having the a staff member be like, "You've been here long enough." Hey, you you've been here. Uh, JT picking up some twenty great balls. Um, yeah, and this is a nice little backup because uh, you mentioned that not only was he a little bit thin on the Ultra Balls, uh, but now is running thin on Great Balls, yep. and there's a nice stack of 20 uh, that's available right there. Leggy grabbing a Ghastly, so we have now seen two Ghastlies uh, in Tower, which is more than you normally see. So if, if speedrunning were an event at this World Championships, and with it being the Scarlet Violet era, oh you would God, think no, like it'd be no. something Scarlet Violet related. Uh, is there like a category you think would be appropriate? I mean, Teal Mask like to is only, what, like an hour? Uh, hour Teal Mask, an hour 40, hour 45 from the school start. That wouldn't be too bad. It's still, I, well, I would no, know. If you add I mean, I put, I put 155 as my GDQ estimate. Yeah, because if you put, if you add the tutorial in, that's what, like two and a half hours? That's, uh, that's too much. Like, Scarlet and Violet is just long. It's just a long game. Yeah. I, I would, I would say that if I, if I had to do Teal Mask as, like, a competition, I would definitely do the Espathra route and not <laughs> Metacham because would you would never get a runnable Metacham. <laughs> It's yeah. not. It's not even the high jump kick thing. I would risk the high jump kick thing. It's. It's just. 
I, I've spent hours just trying to get one runnable meta type for a day. <laughs> yeah, the Pokemon Company would make us watch the intro movie, not even the bed start. Oh yeah. my god, that's rough. Yeah, yeah you'd like, be right. I, I've been doing a lot of Scarlet and Violet speedrunning like off camera because you know friends need legendaries for tournaments and stuff, so um, it doesn't take me. You know, it doesn't take very long. <laughs> I mean, it, it, it's not like it's a short speedrun or something, but uh, yeah, you know, to get people. Well, like, they had to put so much stuff. good plot in the game because if, if I had a gripe about Sword and Shield, it's that the plot was a little thin and then pokemon was like bet we're gonna make a game with great plots i will say Sword scarlet yeah, violet does no. have a better story than some of the more yeah, it, has a, it has a it has fantastic plots i, I uh, preferred it know, to the sword and shield issues could be uh something but you know i've heard it's a sword and shield <laughs> plot of just keep battling no really just fight this guy next just just keep doing that over and over again. i want See, I always loved the Pokemon games where you got to, like, team up with the champion. Uh, and it was, like, even in HeartGold Soul Silver, you got that section where you're doing a double battle with Lance. And it's like, cool, I'm working with the champion. And they had such a moment to do that in Sword and Shield, to do that with Leon, to help with one of the crazy Dynamax Pokemon. I think it's actually uh, Gigantamax uh, Meowth that spawns and... And he's like, I got this, I got this, you do this thing. Yeah, like, opportunity. We, don't, we don't, we don't, there's no like moment like that in Sword and Shield. Sword and Shield's just like, yep, nope, uh, you're the main character, just handle everything. Yeah, and, until you get to the actual Turnamax fight, and then it's like, whoa, okay, now we're doing the... the yeah, we kind of take over for Leon during the Eternamax. Yeah, that's because he throws a Pokeball at it. It's yeah, like, like, what are like, you thinking, no, like, man? You're, you're you're a champion of the region. How do you not know? Like, yeah, come on, know. Ultra Balls, chop chop, Ultra Balls, man, you got it. Yeah, no, just like even an Ultra Ball would have been fine. Like, <laughs> doesn't he have access to Master Balls? Wait, what is that? That J Tells. <laughs> JT that runs Eevee? into an Eevee. Uh, <laughs> it's just it's just ironic because we saw Elwo run into <laughs> a Pikachu at the start of the run, so it's only fair. Uh, JT... AP, AP, AOP runners in shambles. JT does finally get a Ponyta on screen here. Remember, JT does need basically all the catches to uh, close out the game here. Uh, just because his catch out was a little bit tight. Uh, would still... Actually still kind of needs a Psyduck to spawn. Because everything else is planned. Like Tentacool, Coughing and Psyduck yes. are all planned. And with Ninetales caught, you can't even do the cheeky, oh, I'll just get Firestone and catch Magmar for two Pokemon. That's not even an option anymore. No, so we do need to see a Psyduck here. Um, could... Now, now, I'm not going to advocate that this is a good strategy, but could catch a Pidgeotto and catch a Magikarp. That will get you to 50. Now, it is not a good strategy to get you to 50. Uh, but that does listen, get you to 50. It does technically get you to 50. Um, could I also mean, go for um, Forbidden Drowsy. Um, or Forbidden yeah, Diglett. Drow yeah, Drowsy Diglett being kind of like true super backups. <laughs> could go to Seafoam and get Slowpoke. Yeah, uh, could, I've never could, seen anybody get that before. <laughs> yeah, oh my god, could you even surf there? Like, I'm trying to remember. Like, I don't even know where the trainers are on that route. Oh, yeah, like good I'd point. I've literally optional. only flying there. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I would hit every optional. <laughs> I just oh, yeah, I mean, okay, we could vet, we could Master Ball a Venonat, which has been done in the oh, tournament yeah. before. <laughs> this is true. We could, we could Master Ball a Venonat. <laughs> A leggy getting so. <laughs> uh, to the Snorlax fight. Just going to go ahead and run from it. Uh, wasn't it last year we saw a shiny Snorlax? Uh, it was. I was commentating the, the race. It was Aspects. <laughs> I was commentating and then that, that week, one. And then that week, somebody got it like in a practice run. Uh, uh, I think it was still Matt waiting for who this had seen it. Um, I don't think they have a repel either. Uh, JT just gonna JT go ahead and move just on. Gonna... And... 
Go for it. That's the farthest South Doe Duo I've ever seen in my that life. South Doe Duo is coming to Fuchsia uh, with... Uh... That Doe Duo is coming to, coming to Fuchsia City with JT. So we had kind of mentioned JT was just treading water. Still is. Still can get to 50. Man, if only Gyarados was like a natural spawn on 21, I think that would no. really... Spicing up the run. Uh, just want to point out there is an Eevee on screen for Leggy. It was just a little bit farther to the north. Uh, yeah, it is uh, another one of those funny catches because it is technically possible because Eevee Flareon yes. can always be a route. Pikachu version can use Eevee as a backup because there are two free Firestones on the ground uh, that are in our way and that we can just pick up. So you can use one for the Arcanine and use the other one for Flareon. Uh, Eevee version does not get that luxury. You could theoretically catch an Eevee and turn it into Flareon, but that's only one catch and it's really slow and, and Eevee sucks to catch anyway. So like you wouldn't, you would never do this on Eevee version, but um, because there's still more of the game, like you could catch Magmar instead. Like, mm -hmm. I don't know what has gone wrong in Eevee version where we need Flareon. <laughs> Uh, I've been told that Gyarados is apparently very fast, and it would be very fast in the water if it did spawn. Uh, yes, Gyarados uh, is a surfing Pokemon that you can use as a Ridemon, uh, and it will—it is very quick in the water. So it's been—it's like it's like that Rapid Ash speed in the water. I believe so. Yeah. So is Lapras. I have seen the Lapras in the water, and those things are fast. Unfortunately, I'm not sure what JT can do here. It'll just be so JT interesting. JT has though. marked Magmar and Ditto. <laughs> I mean, it's possible. All right, let's see what we get here. No, no Weeping Bell, no Tangela. Uh, ooh, oh, oh, we do have an immediate star, though. But we do have the star you. So first things first, the CP, the star is 1037. Uh, which is kind of averagely low, but not, like, devastating by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, does not get Joy-Con moment. Yeah, this is the uh, one JT has had a little bit of some funky off. throws. But that was a nice, excellent throw. Yep. So, 1037. I can't think of... There's nothing else that spawns in this water other than, like... Magikarp, Tentacool, and uh, Star Starmie. You. I mean, I guess Starmie, but we, we're getting a Starmie, <laughs> so. You don't want to catch uh, Starmie here. Ca catching Starmie here things. is terrible. <laughs> yeah, no, don't, don't get Starmie. Uh, <laughs> it's a meme, it's a bad meme. Yeah, though. no, it's a very bad meme. Uh, JT, oh, no, oh, getting... Oh, just getting each other. Yeah, they, the, the Tentacool can do this, is that it'll stop in the middle for, like, a fraction of a second. I'm oh, gonna go ahead and save uh, the moving. ultra. I I think this is actually a fine play here. Yeah, because I actually if you like save this. Save the ultra for one of the um uh your your magmar or your ditto that you're kind of anticipating that you're gonna need. Um, but it's a bit of a lose lose situation. Goes right. for the excellent throw here. So, so JT, in. who was on such a great pace through the run, is now starting to just see that pace stumble a little bit just because that catch route finally caught up to him. Yep. Uh, Leggy is just going through the, the I'll, I like to call it the safari cutscene, uh, and is not all that far behind, especially with that catch count. In fact, Leggy is already ahead on catches, uh, even before hitting Route 21. Yeah, JT is definitely going to need to find something here. Um, I do like the idea of adding Magmar. Um, I'm not a big fan of adding uh, Ditto. Um, I think catching Magikarp and just letting a, it evolve is better. There was Magikarp in the water. <laughs> yeah, I think I think catching Magikarp and letting it evolve might be better than Ditto, but um, it is better than the catch plus the Evo. Um, so I do see why going for Ditto there uh, would be right. Uh, just gonna go ahead and nanab this uh, coughing. Uh, we're gonna—I would assume JT saving the Ultra for Magmar or Ditto. Yeah, yeah, I think that's a great play. Double Great Ball does feel 
pretty safe here. Yeah, double it's grape ball should always safe, get it. But it's pretty safe. Aloe starting the Snorlax. And the reason we don't hatch the Snorlax is because you have to fight it first. Yeah, it's... Uh, and this one's particularly bad because it has uh, increased defenses. So it is actually super tanky and super hard to KO. Uh, There's JT Magmar just getting Magmar just spawning on him, so that's right perfect. So back to Ultra Ball and back to Silver Raspberries here. Uh, still not a great catch. He's definitely going to want to be patient, wait for that attack. Get that cycle. Make sure you hit that excellent throw. It should be in the 70% uh, percentile range here on the catch chance. Yeah, more likely than not, this will stay in, and it does. Ooh, That's and he good. gets it. So there's one of the problems. Still has ditto marked, but it's it's not out of the realm here. You can, again, Master Ball Venonat, Master Ball Diglett, Drowsy, they're all kind of right there for the taking. Oh, there's also the, uh, I'm not sure, I don't know if JT knows, but uh, there is a backup Moonstone you can grab in Saffron. You could just evolve, like, just like a random, like, Moonstone Mon. Oh, so uh, let's see backup Ooh, Leggy's, Leggy's made it to the bottom of the route. No star just yet. Yeah, this uh, is the... I would caution, I would caution uh, going this far to the left, because there is that nasty trainer on the left side oh, of the yeah. route. You just yeah. you got to be a little bit careful there. You don't want to stray too far on the route because sometimes staying still is just as valuable. Uh, nice option to repel and relure. Just kind of reset oh, things. See if you find anything. We got it here. Right. So did lose a little bit of time looking for the star, but that wasn't 10, too bad. Ten seventy eight. Uh, pretty solid. About about average. Slightly above average. Yeah, so JT can actually fix their catch rate or their catch route just by grabbing the backup Moonstone and evolving into like, um, like Clefable or Nido King. Um, they didn't get uh, Nidoran female, but uh, so I would can, say can just fix the catch route doing that. I will say this: uh, Chansey does exist in Mansion. I'm just saying, if a little pink thing doesn't spawn, a big pink thing could spawn. I mean, we've all used the emote bonjour before. Yeah, ca canonical bonjour. Uh, you're picking up the extra silver razes here, the ones that you tend to see in the AOP routes. Uh, really playing it safe. Uh, meanwhile, Leggy, I believe this might be the last catch of the run. Um, might be. I just, I just want to re-see the uh, the party slot here. It does have Do Duo, uh, did get Grimer, so won't be getting Ratata or Tentacool. So, uh, or never mind, that was on Leggy's side. Uh, yeah, that's the last catch of the run for Leggy. Uh, and Owl just catching up as well uh, in a pretty good spot in terms of the catch route, especially with that Doe Duo getting in. Uh, Owl only needs uh, one more Pokemon to spawn between uh, Rattata or Grimer. Can basically ignore Tentacool themselves. J JT Star certified okay, um, but I did just peek at Leggy Star, which ended up having pretty solid stats. Was 90 in both. Uh, the special attack is actually pretty decent when you are that uh, strong and hitting that speed threshold. So yeah, pretty decent star for Leggy side, uh, and not too far behind. Uh, in fact, they might. They're very close to being on the same fight at the exact same time. But just finishing up the menu here, not punished for having uh, Rapidash. This is Ted is one of is infamously 
Uh, one of the uh, more dangerous fights in this game uh, because of the huge jump up in level. Uh, when you fight when you fight Jesse and James, their Pokemon are level 34. Ted's Pokemon are in the 40s. Uh, I believe they're still like 45. So you get a pretty significant jump up level wise, which is why the Eevee and the Pikachu just don't cut it anymore. So to having so to have that big jump uh, really warrants the main swap at the moment. And of course, the first thing he sends out is the Electrode. Super effective against the Starmie. Nice pass from JT, just squeezing by the spinner before he gets there. And now Leggy is on uh, this fight as well. Uh, to have an unevolved Ponyta uh, is much safer here because the Electrode is a lot more likely to target something it know it can KO. Uh, in this case, does get the Thunderbolt into the Starmie, but as long as he's got no paralysis, that's great. But check out JT, who does get the Ditto to spawn, the 50th Pokemon he needs to finish his catch route. No Ultra Balls left in the inventory, but still has the Silver Raspberries. This is unbelievable to catch Magmar, Ditto, and gets the catch. JT is finished with his catch route, only has two Evos and two Gift Pokemon to finish up his route. And there are those two Evos. JT is going to have 48 Pokemon going into Blaine. An absolutely incredible catch route comeback to solidify that pace advantage he had through the early game. What an awesome way to cap off that catch route. One of the more meme catch routes that we've ever seen in this Let's Go tournament. JT getting no bonuses in the early game. Didn't get Ekans, didn't get Pikachu. Didn't get Meowth or Venonat. Was just kind of right there, right on the edge. No Cubone made this difficult and instead opted to catch Kangaskhan and Ninetales and then followed it up with Magmar and Ditto on the catch route. Absolutely stunning way to finish out 50 Pokemon. For all the memes, I think that might be one for the record books. Uh, yeah, I know our I, good friend. I am blown <laughs> away. I think my mic might have just been muted, but uh, I am blown away that that all worked out. Uh, just being able to come back from such a crazy. <laughs> Uh, one of the, one of the, this is one of the catch routes of all time. Yeah. Uh, I, I know our friend Dynam who would do the montages, the collages, if you will. Uh, I can't wait to see what this one <laughs> would look like. Yeah. 48 Pokemon Blaine, uh, is a sight to behold. Well, Sai, we passed the two-hour mark, and I know that anybody going for sub three is like, oh, I want to get a sub two-hour Blaine. Uh, I think everybody would be pretty happy with uh, how their runs have gone right now. Uh, I just want to shout out Leggy for a second here because she got a 314 in the first round of the tournament, and that was a PB at the time. This is well on PB pace for Leggy to enter Blaine's gym at 205. Yeah, this, this is, is definitely this is three, three pace. under three ten. Yeah, this is three ten pace. My PB is a three oh nine, and I finish Blaine at about two oh four. So, uh, this is pretty good pace for like this is like three ten, three eleven pace. Um, yeah, Leggy... I, tend, I tend to find that if you're on um, at least from a top runner perspective, uh, when you finish Blaine with forty six, it's exactly an hour. Yep, uh, at like the high end, and it's usually a little bit more depending on, you know, if you bleed some time. But at the high end, it takes just basically exactly an hour. Uh, but this is this is decently close. I think I think for as uh, for as quiet as Leggy has been um, in this race, like she's right there. Like that's striking distance. Yep. They're both she and on, JT Blaine. Are on Blaine at the same time. Yeah, so they they are tied up now. 
Um, to do note that JT does not have any more Evos. JT is done. Uh, JT will just be moving for the rest of the the rest of the run. Uh, does not need to do anything else. Uh, we'll just be attacking and taking things out. Uh, Leggy does need three more Evos. Uh, we'll likely get one uh, on this fight. Yeah, so that so the catch count disparity of three does make a difference. At this stage, you can pretty safely say, oh, that's like 30 or 32 seconds uh, for each catch. So it is about a minute and a half plus a couple of Pokemon, so maybe rounding to about a two-minute advantage. But that's a lot closer than I thought it was going to be at this stage, especially based on how fast JT's early game was. Definitely had to uh, 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 just settle back down for the catch route uh, that needed to be caught up in this end game. All right, so JT getting through the nine tails. Yep, JT just through finished up. Blaine. So 207.30 for JT. I'm gonna put some generally on 308, maybe 309 pace, um, which is still pretty solid. And like we say, uh, like we saw with Leggy, uh, Leggy getting two Evos on this screen. So he's gonna finish with 47 uh, at about, we'll round up to 209. Uh, and as you said, kind of right there, uh, 309, 310 pace uh, for Leggy. So it's still to play for. Um, and Allo, uh, not too far behind, still going through the uh, the sea skimming section. Um, their star was 1047. 1047. If I they got correctly. the, I believe, the second highest one. Like he had 1078, I think. Yeah. So we'll have to see the stats because we all know that CP is a lie. Woo hoo. This has been so exciting. I'm so, I'm so glad I commentated this run. Uh, just wow. Just the memes, the speed. Th this has been a fantastic race to watch. And this is something <laughs> that uh, when we kind of came up with the format uh, of this tournament, we're using Swiss style. So if you're familiar with how uh, play Pokemon runs their tournaments, so it's kind of the same kind of the same theory. Um, you'll play someone who is about your you know, who has the same number of wins or losses as you do every round. So what this ends up doing is getting a lot of races that are very close. So we end up with uh, some awesome races like this. Yeah, uh, pretty much uh, every and, single round. And from discussing with uh, one of our organizers, Etiquette, who has the uh, the Swiss calculator, uh, he had been mentioning that eight match points is generally what. Uh, the players are looking for to make top cut. Uh, in this case, uh, because they are rounds of three, there will be a nine player top cut out of our 30 competitors. So looking for eight match points through the four Swiss rounds is not guaranteed, uh, but is highly likely to make it. Uh, there are some situations where uh, maybe one seven point could make it. Uh, there could be one or two eight pointers that could bubble out. Uh, and in this case, uh, instead of resistance, uh, to which is a term I know you are familiar with, yes. Cy, uh, instead of resistance, we're kind of using uh, best average time as the tiebreaker uh, with your worst time thrown out. So anybody with a DNF through the first four rounds, they get that time thrown out or just whatever your worst time was. Uh, you get to ignore that one and just take your top three, uh, which kind of makes it a little bit more of a surefire average instead of being like oh i had one bad round and it messes up your entire average for the swiss rounds yeah uh and then just kind of looking ahead um since we are through most of round three uh there is only one person who is guaranteed to make top cut already it is say in sync they've got nine points their average time is in the three double o's which is just bananas to think about. <laughs> that is crazy. The, uh, they definitely, uh, the League of French Runners has been strong this tournament. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, there are three players that are on eight match points as well. Uh, we have Headstrong, uh, who was in that, uh, that top round, round three match, uh, getting second place, earning two points. They're on eight. Uh, Ergo is on eight points as well as Amber. So they are in a very solid spot 
to make top cut, especially with their strong average times. Um, there are a few players that are in uh, win and in situations, though. Uh, among them, we have uh, Tucker and Etiquette are on seven match points. Uh, so they really only need to get second place to solidify at least eight. Uh, Randall and Etchy are on six match points. So they will probably want a second place and a strong time above that median time earns them that second bonus point uh, and will be in the driver's seat. Uh, everybody else kind of looking for a win in round four to maybe get close to that uh, eight point threshold. Uh, I myself still have to go. My race is going to be on Sunday. I'm the last one. Uh, and that's going to be another strong race with a, a lot of three point contenders. Oh yeah, that one's going to be a very, very good race. Looking forward to that one. We also have Aspect, uh, Aspect's race coming up tonight as well. Or, well, tomorrow morning. <laughs> to we'll, to tomorrow we'll, morning. We'll talk about that when we get to the end of the race. <laughs> <laughs> Another uh, yeah, just, gen hours race. Yep, that will be Aspect, Yasko, and Albi. Uh, the D-Gen hour race. I believe that's 4 a.m. Yeah. Eastern time. So, yeah. uh, listen, I I watch a lot of F1. I'm always up at 6 o'clock in the morning for those races. Me too. This one's a bit of a stretch. <laughs> so it's a bit of a stretch for yours truly at 4 a.m. <laughs> and that's Eastern time, so that's 1 a.m. Pacific. Uh, oh, yeah, that's have not fun too with bad. that one, guys. That's not I'll, too bad. I'll watch that one on replay. <laughs> no, that, one's, that one's not too bad for you. For me, it's... Uh... Uh, it's just just a little just a little too uh a little bit little too stretch. early for me oh a muck spawning on owl that's very unfortunate uh, there's just, not much you can do about spawns uh, in this game <laughs> sometimes things just spawn on you yeah uh, and there's one other race i want to mention coming up uh that one's good it, this one's a fun one and then the, this one's this one's one that slots was very kind to uh we got pokey tax iron and fury uh, that's another one that has some strong meme potential in it, so you don't want to miss that one. Uh, and then the last race of the tournament will be uh, myself versus Crisis and Kerbis. That is one of those stacked races with a lot on the line. That will be a very good one. I uh, do want to point out real quick, uh, Owo, um did pick up the Max Elixir, so if you were missed the first mm -hmm. part of the hideout section... Uh, Owl ran out of Zippy Zaps, did have to use the Elixir early, so uh, one of the benefits of peak aversion, you can pick up that Max Elixir as a backup. Uh, EV does not get that backup. Yeah, yeah. like I definitely want to just use this section of the run to just talk about a little extra, because going through Blaine and... Um, or, or, yeah, Blaine, Surge, Erica... Not, not the most interesting section. Starmie really shines as an extremely powerful Pokemon. Yeah, Starmie is a very uh, perfect Pokemon kind of just for this section of the run. Uh, Starmie gets... Uh, it's it's one of the... Oh, oh uh, JT almost flying the Lavender for some reason. Uh, Starmie gets like such an incredible move pool. It's one of the best Pokemon out of Generation 1 uh, in the early days of like singles competitive, but... Um, for this run in particular, uh, Starmie has a moveset that can hit every single Pokemon that we see for at least neutral damage, with the sole oh. exception of this next fight, uh, where we will have to do something a little weird um, to take out an Exeggutor um, of all Pokemon. Yeah, it's, it's honestly the access to Thunderbolt, which is ridiculously overpowered uh, as somebody that has done a lot of gen 2 randomizers back in the day thunderbolt is the bar none best move in the game for gen 1 and gen 2 because there are so many water types and they are very bulky water types so the ability to have access to thunderbolt is incredibly powerful for starmie in addition to it having an absolutely sick typing in water psychic and access to those stab moves and Scald and Psychic itself. And then if you need a little extra damage, there's always Hydro Pump, to which, you know, there's always some meme potential at the very end of the run if you really want to risk it for the biscuit. Yeah, Hydro Pump is going to lead to some fun moments uh, coming up. <laughs> Starmie is just, uh, just a perfect Pokemon for this run. It's like crazy to think about it. 
I, I love to explain to a lot of my, like, TCG friends or just other casual gamers, or it's like, yeah, I've been playing Let's Go, and they're like, yeah, that one was actually pretty hard near the end, and I was like, yeah, just use Starby with Thunderbolt. <laughs> <laughs> just, just use Starby. Easy like, peasy. Yeah, Starby. You don't even have to be that over-leveled uh, for the run as well. Just a little X item. A little X item uh, the, usage helps to get you over the top. The thing I've noticed since I've became a, 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 gotten a new Pokemon speedrunning is that casuals and like other people just don't know what X items do. <laughs> Talk to a and lot of my BGC friends who are like, yeah, I, just, I gotta beat this game. game again. And I'm like, what are you talking about? The game's like four hours. Like, it's not that bad. Yeah. There, just hand me your switch. Yeah, uh, I got this. I mean, bad. I mean, BDSP. I've never played that game before. Ugh, that's uh, that's that's a video game. Yeah, uh, but X items are particularly broken in this one uh, because starting in Gen Seven, uh, X items now raise the stat stage by two instead of one. Uh, but in this game in particular, they actually kept the original price. Uh, compared to its uh, inspiration game of Pokemon Yellow, so they're basically twice as powerful and uh, and fifty percent off. Yeah, in uh, in generation in the Sun and Moon series, uh, they changed their effects to give you two stat boosts, but they doubled their price. But for whatever reason, because this game is a remake, um, they were like, "Ah, we'll just keep them with the new effect mm -hmm. and the old price." I uh, want to make it easy on money routing for us speedrunners. Yeah, JT, the first to hit the archer fight. This a legendary double battle. Uh, Sai, this one's all you. Yeah, uh, all my homies hate archer. This is widely regarded as the worst fight in the game. JT actually getting the perfect opening uh, to this fight. Uh, you want to see the electrode uh, blow up. You want to see it explode and the muck not protect. Um, so it gets uh, it was able to be taken out in one turn. So now uh, archer will send out his Golbat and the Team Rocket member will send out Eradicate. So from here, all all JT needs to do is hope that Trace and his Cubone um, do the right thing, which is take out the Eradicate over the next two turns. Uh, this fight is... It's not that this fight is hard. Um, this fight is very... It's, it's winnable. It is very challenging because he opens with an Electrode, and um, Electrode sucks. But... Um, this fight has a ton of lag because it's a double battle. As you see, like, the camera is just kind of panning around, doing nothing right now. Um, yeah, if you thought Scarlet Violet was bad, yeah, this no, fight. Try a double battle <laughs> in this game. <laughs> like, it's way laggier. Um, so, this fight can just waste a lot of time. Even if you get, like, a perfect archer fight, um, it can just waste a lot of time. Which, JT not getting a perfect archer fight, uh, the Cubone deciding to focus energy... Uh, last turn, so we'll do. We'll get a four-turn archer, which four is turn, perfectly which is still acceptable. very nice. Yeah, you a three-turn uh, is perfect, but uh, a will any will any one of us will take a four-turn archer. A five-turn is fine yeah. too. Uh, before we get into the leggy side, just want to mention that I'll unfortunately hit one of the optionals in Surge's gym. Just got to be a little bit careful when talking to that second uh, trash can. Uh, the trainer that is on the left side can spot you just so if you're oh, not yeah, careful. That, that so unfortunately, just had to waste a little bit of time. Before. I have hit him. Yeah, once. I, it's so scary. I've I've been so close in a couple times. It's actually quite scary. Um, so it's just one of those things where it's like you kind of have to think about it, and you're just like, so I'll, I'll take an extra step away from him just to make sure I don't hit him. Yeah, I I like stand next to the sailor when I do that trash can. Uh, just now, um, I, I hit that guy, and I'm like, you know what? We'll just stay on that side. So, Leggy looks like they are on pace for a five-turn archer, the Muck Protected turn one. Yeah, Muck Protect uh, with the Thunderbolt. So, instead got the... Uh, uh, took some wheezing damage. Um, we'll see. Funny enough, uh, the Raticate actually uh, attacked into the Cubone here. So that isn't too bad because now the Cubone, who which already focused energy, oh, uh, got, this looks like it got a double be a crit. Four turn for like so this could, yeah. If we get um, if we get Bone Meringue, it should be a Bone four Meringue turn. Just has to it hit. hits, it uh, does? Okay. and it does yeah. hit. That's a nice recovered four turn thanks to Trace actually focus energy on the uh, appropriate turn here. 
and not just throwing some wasted damage down. Yeah, shout outs to Trace for actually like, you know, using strategy in that fight instead of just clicking buttons. Yep, got the got the nice step up there. For those of you who uh, may have only seen the speedrun version of that fight and not the casual version of that fight, Trace also has a Raichu and a Pidgeot in his team and sure. leads with Cubone for some reason. Sure, sure does. <laughs> yeah, he just... Uh, I'll never understand all... <laughs> it. Uh, I've seen a lot of his Pokemon in that fight. Don't ask me <laughs> how or why. It's not important. <laughs> Yeah, Trace is like a full party of Pokemon that are all like really good and leads with Cubone for some reason. So, yep. Uh, if you're on the, uh, if you're his, on the Pika version, don't forget about his Gloom. I so. swear I've seen the Gloom before. I don't remember the Gloom. I know I've seen the Pidgeot and the Raichu. I know yeah, for a I've fact definitely I've seen, seen those two. I think I've seen the Gloom once. I think he literally got through all of his Pokemon. A shame we can't make that a category. Kill Trace. I that's what it was. I have seen the pony. That's what it was. Oh, he I was, was a thinking pony there was, at that point too. Okay. There was there was a fourth Pokemon that I knew he had and I forgot what it was. Okay, it wasn't Gloom, it was Pony. That's okay. what I was thinking of. Because I've definitely seen him use four Pokemon before. I'm just like, who's actually winning this fight? <laughs> All right, so Owl finishing up uh, Erica's gym. Uh, unlike uh, in Lieutenant Surge's gym where the uh, the NPCs have eagle eye, uh, these trainers are completely blind. You can stand right in front of them and they won't see you. Yeah, I I'm always worried. I still take them pretty safe. Yeah, I, and I do the I same thing. I'm always like, I've super been, sharp. Yeah, I've been running this game for like four years and I'm still like, <laughs> ah, this is, this uh, is sketchy. This is real sketchy, but... Uh, they're they're totally blind. Uh, they have like one tile vision, and the little alcove they stand in is actually like two tiles. So <laughs> they, they just can't see you at all. It's, it's great. Uh, J tiles picking up the master ball, uh, the super useful item now that we're done catching Pokemon. I mean, he could still catch a he could still master ball Venonat for the fans if he really wanted to. He could. <clears throat> if he really wanted to. Fifty one out of uh, fifty one out of fifty. You can skip right. picking up the Porygon. <laughs> I think Leggy Quite literally one of the fastest gift Pokemon in the game. I think Leggy actually timed it, where, like, uh, evolving... If you have to, like, evolve something extra, uh, like, if you somehow end up on, like, a weird catch route with, like, an odd one, it's roughly about the same time to let something extra evolve. Uh, then let uh, then get go get the Porygon with uh, that's with all the extra movement combined getting the Porygon as well. Oh yeah, because you would you would kind of you would you would cut a uh, a path straight through Saffron. Yeah, instead of uh, to the Mart instead of taking the loop around. Yeah, you would just leave out on the right side and then just go right up to the center. So you'd actually save a ton of movement. So it's I I, I still think getting the Porygon is a couple seconds faster, but um, it's not the end of the world if you somehow end up at 51. You can just skip the Porygon. It's about the same time. Oh, I'll have time. to remember that next time. Yeah. I mean, I've seen enough situations in this game that I feel like I've compiled a catalog <laughs> of what random nonsense can I do? Like, I've skipped the Lapras before because I caught a Rapidash, but I had already picked up the candy. And I was like, well, this puts me on 51, so I could skip Candy, skip Lapras. Uh, just note, that was and the it's... fourth Abra we have seen in this speedrun. <laughs> I did thought I saw that in yeah, the midst of... That was the fourth the Abra we've seen, past. none of which have been on JT's screen. <laughs> JT about to do I... the final shop of the run. We're just going to spend all our money on some healing items, some X items. Uh, now, we are in a race setting, so we are going to pay a little bit of attention here of what... X items JT buys because it will give it away, but JT is buying the X special defense, uh, which does tell us he is likely doing uh, the normal uh, one controller strats um, or uh, and buying the X defense as well. So, gonna do the normal uh, strats here. Um, it's it's funny to give it away that that not buying the X defend and special defense is actually the safe 
way to do the end game. It's actually not buying the defend yep. uh, X items. Um, that's because you want the, def the the defending X items in one controller strats. If you don't buy them, you're actually committing to the two controller strats. So it is kind of the it's reverse uh, in reversely intuitive. But it works on that way because of the access to the second controller. Yep. Now I don't blame JT for buying the buying all the X items, but then just kind of gauge like, oh, if I'm like still far ahead, I can still do it safe. And you've only bought extra X defense, X special defense. Yeah, JT might gauge it so and just be like, well, fun. I've got this lead and I can keep going. So uh, we'll see. Just do the shop normally. Uh, yeah. Might also just you be just can't do memory. it the other way around. Correct. If you if you commit to safe strats, you are fully committed to safe strats, and you can't be like, oh, you know, I'm actually, maybe I will do the risky faster strats. It's you are already yeah, you, missing the items. You, you can only take so many hyper beams without a X uh, special defense. Usually, that number <laughs> is one. It's JT going to start the Sabrina fight. Uh, this fight does have like a little bit of like RNG, not much. Um, if we what we really want to see is no light screen turn one, uh, we'd like to see no mm, light screen here. Are you sure? Are you sure about that? Because when I don't see light screen turn one, I always see it turn two. And you then I don't want to see I light screen turn. at all, rather. OK, yeah, <laughs> you do not want to see light screen at all. It is very, very rare. She I like I mean, I don't think I've ever yeah. seen it in like the four years of me running this game of getting light so, screen skip. I have seen no light screen asterisks. <laughs> uh, I was in a race last year and it was on GDQ, uh, no less. Uh, it was during a hotfix slot. And I don't see light screen turn one and I don't see light screen turn two, at which point you are allowed to attack and KO the Mr. Mime. My Starmie was so bad, it did not KO the Mr. Mime oh and proceeded God. to light screen turn three. <laughs> Which doesn't just lose one turn, it actually loses three turns. Yeah, so you have to waste time healing just to like, well, oh my God. It was miserable. I was sad. I cried live on the GDQ channel. Oh, that's <laughs> awful. Uh, that run, by the way, uh, was the run where the Rhyhorn, like, spawned as I exited Tunnel. Uh, it is also a run where I got double protect on Koga. A successful double protect on Koga. <laughs> oh, we have seen uh, a amongst, successful double A bunch protect. of other stuff that happened. <laughs> oh, we have seen a successful double protect in the tournament. Uh, I think it was last race. So that is how close I was to getting light screen skip is that I just missed the Mr. Mime range. <laughs> uh, this is a little odd from Leggy. I think Leggy's a little lost here. That looked a little odd. Okay, back on track. All right, Owl currently going through the Archer fight. Um, looks like this is going to be a five turn Archer. At least got the or, uh, Boomerang or, or uh, on the Raticate. to take out the Raticate this turn. Uh, gonna go ahead and this is actually more likely than you think because with wheezing and eradicate the cubone is a bit more likely to even uh, use bone meringue and even if it selected the wheezing slot it goes into the eradicate yep. so that was actually a nice little cleanup there yep so all three uh, with of our the, runners getting very good archer 2 fights uh that is yeah with, with the worst on, fight in the game yeah with golbat on screen Sometimes the Cubone will just select Headbutt and go into Golbat, in which that is just quite simply a wasted move. Now, uh, JT doing early teeth. Early teeth, best teeth. Um, I think I do early teeth. Pretty sure I do early teeth. Chat, press one if you do early teeth and two if you do late teeth. We'll, we'll make it a poll. Uh, and JT coming up to one of the uh, more impactful fights of the game. Funny enough, it's not Koga. It is instead Kaden.
So, of course, Koga's Gym has the requirement of the 50 Pokemon caught. Uh, the whole reason why this run is super interesting and we love it. But it is not Koga who is the problem here. It is, in fact, Kaden. Uh, every single trainer in this gym does have Toxic Protect. Haha, <laughs> very funny. Uh, but Kaden adds a little extra peril into the mix because his muck knows the move Minimize. Uh, and that can be a bit problematic and can go south pretty fast uh, uh, if Kaden, one is not careful. Uh, fun fact, Caden also has some of the strangest move sets uh, in the entire game. Um, this muck has Moonblast randomly, uh, which if you get hit yeah. by that and you get the drop, you have to go for a different uh, attack on the Beedrill. Um, and the Beedrill randomly has Outrage. Uh, we never see it as speedrunners, <laughs> but it does have Outrage <laughs> for some reason. I've never seen the Outrage before. <laughs> I have seen the moon blast. It's funky. Yeah, the the moon blast is pretty uh, is pretty like sort of well known because uh, there's actually like strats for it uh, if you get the special attack drop. But um, yeah, yeah, if you, you get the special attack right? drop there, um, normally what you do in that fight is you just uh, you scald the bee drill just to save a psychic. Uh, but if you get the moon blast uh, special attack drop, you have to go for psychic there. Otherwise, it won't KO the bee drill. And this is the section of the game where the psychics are pretty tight. Um, you only have access to 10 between now and uh, the heal in Victory Road. Uh, and with Koga's Pokemon all-knowing Protect, uh, it can certainly waste a lot of those psychics in this section. Uh, so you want to be as efficient as possible. Uh, one of the things that you can do here is if you recognize that your special attack is high enough, you can opt to Scald a lot of Koga's Pokemon. Otherwise, you might have to use Psychic. In this case, JT probably has to use Psychic on the Weezing and Venomoth here due to his special attack. Yeah, and this might highlight some... Uh, th this, this gym can go very differently depending on if your Starmie is good or not. Um, you can go for some kind, some ranges on some of Koga's Pokemon. Like you can go for things like Scald on like Venomoths or stuff like that. Ooh, we just got a double protect. Oh, we we just got a successful double protect from the Weezing because it toxic, then protected on the heal turn, and then protected successfully just then. So Koga being extra annoying for JT. So that was a four turn wheezing before even attempting anything else on his team. Leggy not too far behind. Now just entering the gym. We're getting to Kaden here in a moment. Uh, the rest of that fight went okay. No more protects from the Golbat or Muck. So should have enough Psychics to uh, finish the rest of this section. Though just a little bit annoying that he had to use four, uh, ultimately five, on Koga himself. Yeah, JT should still be good on Psychics. Um, I don't know if they do early or late Elixir. Um, I always do late Elixir. I always Elixir after the Koga fight, um, just because I, I I just think it's better to menu uh, for the Elixir there than it is after Sabrina. And I believe this was the normal or earlier Elixir sequence here. Uh, as long as you have four Psychics, you are perfectly good. If you're at three, you might have to save one somewhere. Yeah, you need one. Um, you need one in Giovanni's Gym, I think. Yes, you need one in Giovanni's Gym for the Nidorino. One it's in Giovanni's Gym, one, one in at least one on Rival, maybe two. Um, and then one Usually for the Usually you have to use yeah, usually you, have, you definitely need one for the Vile Plume and the Venusaur. So there's your three. The fourth comes from the Raichu uh, because oh, you can you do safely... have to. Yeah, if you you can scald the Raichu, but I believe if you have low special attack, um, it doesn't. It can be a range. Yeah, it can be a range. So you always yeah. want a psychic that. Yeah, you're right. So, it's so if you're at three, you can just hydro pump the the uh, Raichu if you'd like, but 
if you miss, it will thunder you back. Yeah, uh, hopefully the thunder misses. But um, if I've ever, yeah, I'm, I have been in so missing. many situations where like this guy, I'm like, yeah, he's just joker. gonna thunder. It's fine. It's seventy percent accurate. And I'm like, the the AI never misses this move. I've never seen thunder miss. Meanwhile, pretty solid start on Leggy's side for this Koga fight. Uh, actually, got to go for Scald on both the Weezing and the Venomoth. Those are the two big ranges that you're looking for. If you have high enough special attack, you can safely Scald them, and that conserves the Psychic PP. So not nowhere in danger here for Leggy in terms of move usage. Yeah, Owl starting uh, their final shop of the run. Yeah, pretty solid. Leggy is still not too, like, in shouting distance right now. Just ready to swoop on in should any other nonsense occur here. So I'm not surprised that JT just grabbed those extra X defense and X special defense in the normal fashion, just in case. Yep. Leggy, I'd say Leggy's about maybe a minute behind JT, maybe a little longer. I think probably a little bit closer to two minutes. It's like two cutscenes here. Uh, it's the strong push or pushy push cutscene, and then the Professor Oak yep. cutscene. Yeah. So it, it might be a little bit closer to that two minute mark. Yeah. Uh, JT starting uh, Tamer Cole. Um, this fight is just two psychics. Um, it might be psychic scald. Uh, I don't. I don't think JT's got good enough uh, special attack to go for the scald. Or for the psychic on the uh, well, we don't need enough psychics. Oh, uh, JT yeah. late psych, late elixir, so uh, it doesn't matter. Okay. Yeah, so you can so that's, psychic that's super solid. if you have good enough special attack. Uh, it just saves some text. That's all. Uh, gonna go for the psychic. Uh, does get the KO. And now for one of the scariest fights in the run, depending on how JT does this fight. You know, let's see here. Did not yet <laughs> summon the second controller well we'll see if samuel will okay we're going to a second do the, and safe, he does. the safe version of this fight okay yeah quite i think that was quite uh quite obviously coming here i don't yeah. think there's any reason to take a risk a one controller fight just uses hydro pump but of course hydro pump is hydro pump now we could have what happened to etiquette in the last round which is miss hydro pump miss mega horn and then you just try again <clears throat> yeah, JT just going to do the safe version of this fight, which is summon second controller, X special, and Scald. So that just takes Samuel out with one attack. Uh, the one controller version of that fight, you Hydro Pump and Prey. <laughs> hydro Pump, of course, 85% accurate. Or is it 80? It's just 80. Jeez. Oh, it's just 80. Even yeah. Worse. <laughs> It's Megahorn that's 85, so it's oh, very Starmie funny. Oh, Starmie has died on use. Owl's side. Oh no, what happened here? Uh, I believe... Oh man, I'm not entirely sure. Uh, they got very low HP. They might not have healed after... Uh, it looks like they are just healing. Okay, this is fine, actually, uh, because what we can do is just uh, bring the Starmie in, summon second player, and then just go. So I was just looking at the replay uh, here. Okay, on so screen. they got the uh, uh, the, special the special defense, defense drop. drop. Um, and the only problem is that they started the fight not at full HP. They started at 77. So effectively took Psychic, Psychic with defense drop, and then the last Psychic was the one that did more damage than expected. Yeah. So, Owo gonna heal here. Uh, that would be good. And then the burn is just going to take out the Mr. Mime. Um, so the rest of this fight is fine. Uh, Owo only has one X special attack here. Um, I believe the only thing that might not die is this Alakazam, but this Alakazam can't actually hurt you. Uh, it's only attack. Uh, you can go for Hydro Pump here, though. Uh, <laughs> or just miss. <laughs> yeah, or you could, or you could hydro pump it. So that's fine too. Uh, that works as well. Um, yeah, the Alakazam can't actually hurt you. Uh, it doesn't really have good attacking moves. 
Uh, it yeah, usually it goes for has Night Shade, Psychic. which does, I believe, <laughs> 44 damage. Yep. But Psychic does about the same. So I'm not surprised there. It does a little bit more than the Mr. Mime. Uh, JT did go for the uh, the safe uh, two controller strat on Giovanni, uh, where you actually want the Rapid Ash to be KO'd one by the uh, this fight. Wow, the Leggy memes from Owl went for the Hydro this. Pump. All right, a way to save a few extra seconds. This fight is very fast if this works pump. out. Easy. <laughs> and it's a hit. Easy. So that saves a bunch of time for like I believe that that saves like what like like twenty seconds something like that. Um, uh, I think it's not quite that much. I it think it's a bit like closer 15. to. I think it's closer to like ten. Um, maybe twelve. Because you don't have to summon or desummon the second controller, which is four seconds in itself. Uh, and just the fight overall is just a shade faster. I think it's a bit closer to 10 seconds, but it is still a nice little bit of time save. You'll get another little chunk with an uh with the risky uh with the risky Giovanni fight if she goes for it here. I believe, well, Leggy is on Pika, so uh, they usually buy X Defend early. Uh, Leggy is going to save. Uh, that tells me we are seeing a one controller Giovanni here. Yeah, just, so kind of splitting the difference, just taking the little safety save time, the extra two, three seconds there, just to have the peace of mind of uh, not falling too far behind uh, should anything bad happen. JT summoning second player. Uh, we're going to start the rival five fights. This will be our last fight with the rival. All right, so the setup here, a little bit more dangerous. Got to go through that X defend. So a crit effectively does three times as much damage at this stage. So just simply don't get crit. Uh, and the Doug Trio is incredibly fast. Good to see Slash there, very safe. Didn't do very much damage. Survives that final crit chance. And the fight is through for Leggy. The only thing is you're at pretty low HP. You will have to heal that off before uh, the rival fight, which is the one that JT is on. Yeah, noticeably, uh, you'll notice the star me that we have kind of like outspeeds everything uh, in this game. Uh, we will set up X speeds for things that we don't outspeed. Uh, that Doug Trio is the only thing that uh, like will outspeed us without any X items, and we don't set up any X items, uh, any X speeds right, in that here we, fight. Here we go for Aloe. Got a minimize from Muck, but hits through it. Aloe through Caden? So Aloe should be good to get through the rest of this gym. The Koga fight is pretty safe. And it looks like JT is through Rival. JT through Rival and Leggy confirming she is minus 230 to PB. Let's go, Leggy. So that's probably around the 310, 311 pace at the moment, uh, but still incredibly strong run. All right, JT going to be making their way to Victory Road. I think this was just a good chance to just <laughs> catch our breaths. Yeah, I mean this this race has been really good so far. Leggy, uh, Leggy's still on uh, the heels of JT. Uh, probably about I'd say now about like a few three minutes back, maybe a little bit longer, maybe about three. Maybe yeah, I'd say about like two minutes or so. Yeah, uh, from catching up. So uh, JT gonna have to do some gonna have to. Keep up with uh, the strats they're doing to stay in the lead. Uh, but this does look pretty good. Alo doing a really good job getting through. Uh, Koga's gym uh, is through. Oh, 
Paolo got explosion on wow. the yeah. Very rare to see that, but can be pretty good here. Oh no no, it was uh it was a misclick. Um it well it was a kind of sort of misclick. It was a thun <laughs> ended up going for thunderbolts and it didn't kill. Um but the wheezing exploded nonetheless. Uh, but can be actually a little bit advantageous here because at a lower HP, you're a bit more likely to not see protects. Koga might actually be going for the KO here. Yep. I um, actually did no not protects. see it anymore. Yeah. <laughs> so maybe that's the new strat. Actually, don't kill the Weezy. Make sure it uh, goes for explosion. Yeah, let it hit you. So All JT right. is starting Naomi with the two controller strat. So this, again, is safe to uh, move through even if you miss your Hydro Pump here then your backup is to go plus four Scald. Uh, just to recap the race that we've seen today as we uh, are have our first competitor in Victory Road, uh, JT in the lead had quite a strong pace through the early game, but was missing out on a couple key catches. Didn't get any bonuses and failed to get Cubone in Rock Tunnel. So as a backup, got some of the most memed up catch route that we've seen of all time. Had Kangaskhan, Ninetales, Magmar, and Ditto as catches along the route, but is still on a pretty decent pace at around a 309 pace heading into Victory Road with a slightly comfortable lead. Meanwhile, Leggy uh, has just had a strong, solid run herself and is on PB pace by about two and a half minutes, so is in a strong position as keeping JT honest. To be honest here, uh, Leggy's catch route included a Mount Moon Chansey and Bulbasaur. So because of that combination, we actually saw Mount Ivysaur for the first time in a while uh, in this tournament. So that uh, that bout of experience helped with the early game. An extra Abra in the mid game made that made Leggy's catch route incredibly strong and was able to clean up that mid game section and allow her to be on such a fat PB pace right now. So don't count Leggy out and be cheering for that big PB at about a 311 pace at the moment. Meanwhile, Al, a little bit uh, on the uh, back foot here, but having actually a pretty strong run themselves. Uh, I'm not aware of their current PB, but all in all, it's been a pretty just steady and moving forward run. But the highlights had to come from the Squirtle. It was the first Squirtle we've seen in the whole tournament. And that to, of course, outshadow the shiny they caught in this run. It was a shiny Geodude. So the memes being spread around all of our competitors uh, and Aloe having a fine run. They haven't DNF. They are keeping at it and keeping their foot on the gas. Yep, Owl just starting uh, the eighth gym now. Uh, there's a little cutscene that you have to go through here where you get some Mega Stones that don't matter. This game is Mega Evolution. We, we never see it. <laughs> um, slow, we never do it. Um, so Allo just right behind uh, our other two runners who are both in Victory Road. Um, JT on the second floor of Victory Road. Uh, Leggy about to start uh, the Naomi fight. Uh, summon second player uh, for the Naomi fight. JT pushing boulders here. So we're about to see not the most difficult trainer skip in the run, but possibly the highest pressure trainer skip in the run. Haven't you ever had like your heart just start beating a little bit too fast? And it's like, why is my thumb sweaty? I'm trying to do the uh, the trainer you know pass. The, uh, you know the <laughs> meme of like the gamer like meme where they're like relaxed in the chair holding the controller um, and then they like lean forward when it's like getting serious. Yep, that's me Serious, every time I time. do Alexa skip. <laughs> like, <laughs> pretty solid to look JT. at my monitor. Honestly, I only think that uh, you've kind of felt a bit of the nerves when you saw the button, the accidental left controller button press to talk to the rapid ass, just kind of mid stride. It's just kind of like an odd place to be like, oh, talk to the rapid ass. Yep. Uh, but had a very solid Alexa skip. And then got to Caroline, which is one of the more uh, problematic trainers of the run, just because you have to go for a Hydro Pump here. And missing a Hydro Pump can always lead to more 
uh, lovely kisses and being put to sleep, which just then loses more turns. So, little bit of a uh, uh, of a slightly slippery slope against the ice type. And just note, we do level up on this fight. So, taking a look at JT's uh, special attack there, uh, JT hit one thirty six special attack. So that should mean they are good for uh, the last major range or the last major damage range uh, in the game. Uh, which will be Lance's Dragonite. Yeah, that seems pretty good. You get two level ups between now and then. You want to hit 140, and Starmy should easily clear two points of special attack per level to hit that threshold. So looking good in that front. JT is going to push a boulder 20 times here, so... Uh, <laughs> Meanwhile, Owl is on the one controller fight for Samuel. So here's another Hydro Pump coming our way. Can't miss this one. It's only on 38 HP. Easy. But gets it. So of our runners, uh, our leader, uh, the leader of the race right now is the only one who did 2C Samuel. So uh, keep those safe strats to hold on to the lead. And JT about to start the Dawson fight. Uh, this was the first trainer that we figured out you could skip at the very end of the game uh, by kind of abusing Mount Pokemon physics. Um, so that ended up creating this category uh, in general. Yeah, no Mount skips. They are not allowed. Now, do you consider it a glitch? Uh... It's more like a programming quirk. Yeah. All right, JT actually had great HP for this too. So JT actually doesn't have to heal. Um, you do have to take one hit from this Lickitung and it knows power with for some reason. I don't know, this game has weird movesets. Uh, also, <laughs> yeah. Leggy threw the Alexa skip with a clean yeah. skip. That's about how I like to do it. Like slow and steady, slow and steady. And we got it. <laughs> That's usually how I approach it. And then we'll take a peek at what Caroline will have to offer. While at the same time, Owl, also one controller, Giovanni, just all in. Just push those chips to the center of the table. It's what What do you got to lose, right? Yeah, Owl's just going for it. Uh, gonna set up the X special defend here. Uh, JT picking up the full restore. Uh, so. Allo now setting up the X special attack. Going to take another Earthquake, and that should be good enough HP. Actually, 24 HP? We'll see a level up here. Uh, Allo might be good to not that, heal for Rival 5. I think so. I think that yeah. is just on the safe side, uh, especially with the level up that's incoming here. It looks scary, but... I don't think it actually is. Yeah, none of Giovanni's Pokemon have any kind of priority moves, so you don't have to worry about anything here. And the only priority yeah. move you'd come up against in the next couple fights is uh, the P Pidgeot's, the quick, Pidgeot's attack. quick Attack. Uh, does the Jolteon Which quick doesn't attack? do that very much damage. It's like low 20s. So unless your defense is like absolutely minimum, 26 even feels safe. Because if it doesn't see a kill, it won't even go for it. Yeah. To begin with. And actually, I think that level up put Aulo out of the red on the HP bar and it back into the yellow. So I think Aulo should be fine to just two see this fight and move on. Yeah, Aulo saying that the high roll only does 22. So that seems pretty good for me. Yeah. So I, that's I, uh, I, and that's what I, you want to see because you're gonna mid you're gonna mid uh mid fight heal. Yeah, like I I would go for it. So the first question that we see here starting the Elite Four for JT is plus four or plus six. It'll be dependent on the special attack. We saw 136, which yep. is actually on the cusp of going either way. 139 tends to be very safely uh, to just go plus four. But with this lead, I'm not surprised to see a very safe plus six. Don't want to do any kind of foot scene However, with a plus four Thunderbolt range or going for a Hydro Pump. Going to plus six here, however, and uh, JT doing the plus 
uh, the three plus one candy route. Um, I do believe JT is going to get turnarounds on Bruno uh, because they did the extra X special attack on uh, Samuel. Interesting. Um, yeah, I guess we'll have to see. It's either I, I it's either that, one extra or two extra. I think it's two, to be uh, honest. Owlo needs to put on a repel. <laughs> <laughs> or just be good, to be honest. <laughs> with those, with those. Oh, moves... and JT did skip. Uh... Okay, JT did skip the X defense. The so X defend is, on G. It right. is very possible that they will get turnarounds on Bruno. No, they skipped the X defend. Yes, but they had the extra one on uh, Samuel. So that that ends so up Samuel, because normally you don't X special on that fight. You just hydro pump. Yeah, that 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 should just be even. So All right, I guess we'll find out. Okay, in a yeah, I guess here. we'll find out here. Uh, and uh, Aloe forgetting to summon the second controller. Not a big deal. I uh, can just summon it in battle. And yep, that is it. So Owl's uh, army fast enough to be able to do this. And yeah, you have, you just have, have to have a visible speed, speed to not outspeed the Pidgeot. <laughs> huh? You have to have abysmal speed yeah. to uh, be outsped by Pidgeots, uh, which is possible, but is extremely uh, unlikely. Yeah, who wouldn't outspeed the Pidgeot? <laughs> Couldn't be etiquette. <laughs> so we'll just quick peek if uh, Psychic results in a turnaround on Hitmonchan. Nope. Uh, it does so, not. So we are good. Uh, so it was a, yeah, so it was the minus one X defend on Giovanni and then the plus one that you had mentioned earlier. So JT... Uh, JT getting uh, the level up there showing 139 special. So any amount oh, yeah. of any amount uh, <laughs> on level up will get us the KO on the Dragonite. All right, Leggy now also starting the Elite Four section on PB Pace, and remember, her star is very good. Oh yeah. Like so this could very could well be a here. plus four instead of plus six. So keeping an eye, keeping an eye on this turn here, and yes, it will be an attack at plus four. So at plus four, just keep an eye out for uh, any Thunderbolt range on the Lapras, and then if we see Scald or Hydro Pump on the Jinx, uh, Scald can still be a range until. It's either 141 or 142 special attack. It's actually a very high threshold to hit to have a guaranteed uh, range. But we're just going to see Scald and a KO. So Leggy right. through with the plus four strats. JT going the completely safe route for Agatha. So there will not be power of love here. There is quite simply uh, set up and attack simultaneously on a two controller setup here. This is so important to make sure you X speed turn two before the Gengars yep. come out to play. And that's why it is important to have a... a... What is it, like a duck? Not a duck or a fish or something? Yeah, bird bird or a fish. Bird or a fish. And, and the reason and it has Bulldog to be one of those... <laughs> the reason it has to be one of those is because the way the AI works in this game, they kind of, like, look at your typing and then see what they have to, like, hit you super effectively. Uh, that Weezing has Thunderbolt, so uh, they will bring out, um, because Thunderbolt is super effective against both your Pokemon, uh, they will switch into that, because uh, it can hit either super effectively. Right. Other than um, having to risk a coin flip between uh, it either choosing Weezing's Thunderbolt or Gengar's uh, Shadow Ball based on something else that might be on the field. Uh, thankfully, it works out uh, it works out nicely, even in the one controller strat, that we know that the Weezing will always come out second, but it is not guaranteed to do so in a two controller strat unless you do it in this way. All right, so it looks like JT is going to be through Agatha. Leggy is also through um, 
Bruno here. Uh, just has to actually finish up the fight here. Oh, look at this meme from oh, Owl. Owl riding, riding the, the star, star me. Hey, you love to see that. <laughs> Uh, so the two controller strat for Lance is actually interesting. You actually start the fight one controller um, because in this manner with the uh, Dodrio in particular, uh, the if you start with a two controller fight, the Seizure can actually recognize it can get a, a turn one KO with Hyper Beam or Hydro Pump. So you actually want to safely stash it away turn one and then bring it out turn two. Oh, um, Owl this, lost uh, the Darmy here. Uh, it's not ooh. a big deal. Uh, this is still a winnable fight with just Rapidash. Um, or we could just do that, and that'll that'll do it too. Uh, you can just Scald at this point, and then Psychic. Um, yeah, just Psychic, and then uh, just X Special Attack on the next turn to make sure the yeah. Dinosaur goes down. So. Safe, by the way, safe to heal there because you want to avoid sucker punch though it might have been locked in outrage uh, i missed if that was uh locked but you still want to heal anyways yeah oh got the uh, flinch the on only... venusaur so actually saved yeah the only odd thing was yeah missed the missed the x attack there but ends up ends up working out just fine uh, meanwhile leggy's starting the uh agatha fight i missed if i saw power of love Looks like it was a power of love to heal off uh, the glare paralysis here. It was turn one, so you still need to X speed on this turn. It does allow the Weezing a chance to actually get a paralysis off with that Thunderbolt. But as long as you dodge that, you are good to go. And uh, as always, you still have access to that full restore just in case the Thunderbolt does go awry. Yep, and Leggy uh, now officially through uh, this fight. Um, once you're through the Weezing uh, and fully set up, it's pretty much over. Um, JT about to finish up the Lance fight. Uh, Dodrio's going to gain an extra level here. I'm going to be so interested to see if Leggy's run goes the distance with a fat PB. I think that will be a massive dub, even if it isn't a win in the Swiss race per se, I think Leggy's going to walk away super happy with this run. Absolutely. But yeah, no issues at all for JT. Hello, uh, we knew that that was going to be a guaranteed range on the Dragonite. Just has champion left to go. Allo getting uh, put to sleep here. But is through Juggler Nelson. Uh, can just T-Bolt, Scald, Scald. Or T Bolt Scald, uh, or T Bolt Scald T Bolt. And J Tal's about to start uh, the final uh, the final opponent in the game. Uh, gonna save uh, for safety. Uh, spoiler Actually, alert! Actually, just saw Champion. Leggy save for safety as well. Yep. Uh, spoiler alert! It is uh, it is uh, the it is rival. So <laughs> rival again. Wow, who would have figured that? Yeah, out? Who would have guessed it? So. I mean, I think Sephiroth should be in every game. Yeah, just make him the final boss. It'll work out better. Yeah. <laughs> you just hear pass there from dun, Hollow. Dun, that was awesome. Da -da 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 -da. <laughs> so JT starting to remember two controller fight here. Really, the one thing you want to see is the Dodrio go down, kind of like in the Giovanni fight. It's a little bit faster to see the Dodrio get KO'd, and it's completely safe uh, from there because the Pidgeot's almost never can KO from full, even with a crit. You have to have abysmal HP and special defense. Yeah. Uh, I also think somebody in chat might be, what? Could it be me? Uh, but it is incredibly unlikely. And in the meanwhile, on Leggy, again, the one controller strat here, use, utilizing the X special defense to have the ability to survive things like Hydro Pump and Hyper Beam, which does on average about 40 maybe up to 42 points of damage barring a crit but once you are set up and through you are sweeping lance's team and it looks like she's got it because that star is absolutely going to be strong enough to ko the dragonite yeah and, and uh, then, here we actually see and then on jt screen we did get the uh the air slash into 
the Starmie, so the Dodrio does not go down here. That will lose about 25 seconds in total, uh, but again, completely safe. Uh, you are through, and he knows that he's in the lead anyways. Yep, point out, Aloe did get a perfect Alexa skip there as well, so Aloe, uh, pretty much on the way out of Victory Road, uh, will be starting uh, the Elite Four uh, right as uh, looks like these runners are about to finish up, so uh, probably about the time that uh, we're in Champion, we'll, uh, Aloe will be starting the uh, Elite Four. Uh, looks like we missed another Hydro Pump. And I believe that is going to... Oh, no, sorry, there is one more Pokemon left. Yep. <laughs> when, you got two, when you got two Pokemon on yeah, the field, the Rival Arrowak sometimes out sends last. out the Pokemon uh, in some weird orders, yeah. so you don't always get Slowbro last. Sometimes it comes out second. It's very odd. You do have to pay attention to make sure that you don't accidentally Psychic it, um, though you have plenty of options to uh, play around it. A lot of Rival's Pokemon can be uh, just hit for super effective anyways. So it's not like the end of the world accidentally wasting a psychic. This is looking like a mid 318 uh, for, or sorry, 308 uh, for JT. Yeah, that was an excellent uh, run from JT. Just a very solid 308 on his end. And he's going to come out uh, with three match points, putting him on five, which crucially for round four is going to put him in a win and in yeah. situation for top cuts. JT will be on the bubble, so uh, hopefully we'll be able to make it through the next round into that top nine bracket. Uh, Leggy, now starting champion. Here we Going go. It's a one, one controller, controller fight. And remember, on the, uh, on the Pikachu side of things, you usually have to go plus six, but remember, insanely high special attack. It's actually at 147 special attack, so I'll wonder if we'll see any plus four shenanigans on this side. All right, so that's good. Setting up the X speed here. All right, these are the dangerous turns. The X specials coming online here. Oh, it's very good. Very good. This turn, of course, you have to heal because the Pidgeot does still have quick attack. Usually only does about 27 points of damage, but it does mean you are safe for this turn. But still got to set up one more. You got you need plus four to KO this Pidgeot here. Don't give it another turn. If you need plus six, just go ahead and set up on the uh, Vile Plume instead because it's going to use Solar Beam. So the Mega Pidgeot goes down. In fact, super safe to just hit uh, Thunderbolt, plus four Thunderbolt on that. So this is why this is super safe. It is always goes for Sol or almost always goes for Solar Beam. You get a free turn to get that plus six. Click the right moves, and Leggy's going to be in through champion and Leggy on her way through. to a massive PB. And Aloe, uh, Aloe did just lose Starmie. Oh, um, again, to a uh, power whip. But this is incredible to see Leggy just has to click all the right moves. Leggy is nearly through. Just one more to go. The final Pokemon on screen. And we are through. And that is it. Uh, Leggy should be through. And on that, Leggy is going to finish with a 3-11, a near three-minute PB for her. That is going to be an awesome second-place finish and honestly a big dub every time you get a PB. Uh, just a quick note on Owl's side, uh, out of revives... So, just died to that last fight of the game. We'll see if Owl wants to continue uh, from here on out. But let's, uh, first of all, congratulate all of our runners here, including our victor for today, Jay Tattles. Jay Tattles with the 308-18. And you were flying in the early part of the run, weren't you? Hi, uh, yeah, yeah, I was. <laughs>
It was it was kind of nice because it like it gave me the freedom to meme quite a bit. Um, after after getting in the tunnel and just not getting any spawns, so it gave me the freedom to do some memeing with uh, with catching up on my catch route a little bit. So have you ever ever caught a nine tails before? Uh, I might have done it once, but I can't remember. Uh, but that could have. I been mean, outside time. of sixty nine tails, I mean. I've never, I've never done 69 kills. So it's a, it's a, it's a good meme. So. I missed that race. I missed that race. But yeah, I think that might have been my first time to catch it. That's so cool. So, so how nervous were you going into the meme section of your catches? Because I've highlighted it a few times on the stream here. Uh, between Kangaskhan, Nine Tails, Magmar, and Ditto, like, what were your backups? Like, what were your Plan B or Plan C or Plan D if it had to come to that? Um, well, so I was like fine, like at the beginning it was like not too big, big of a deal because I still had like all the prescribed catches pretty much. But um, going into tunnel, like I just, I didn't get the female Nido and then um, didn't get Cubone and just like things just started to kind of go askew a little bit with the catches. So I was like, okay, I could, could get Tower Cubone, could get like everything on Route 17, um, uh, gonna have to go for Tentacool and then Side up didn't spawn, so I was like, "Well, I have I don't have bad luck with get it with seeing dittos in my runs, so I guess I can plan for that maybe." Uh, <laughs> yeah, you put you really put it on your out. tracker, and we're like, "Wait, he just put ditto as planned." <laughs> yeah, uh, I don't like that was that was one hundred percent a meme. Like I wasn't expecting to see it, but I'm really happy I did. I was laughing so hard when that stayed in the, uh, I, in the I, I, I want balls. I want everyone to know I screenshotted y'all's catch route and it is in the montage thread for this uh, for this run. <laughs> this Perfect. was I, this was something. I really hope that Dynam does a collage of your run specifically. <laughs> yeah, me too. That was there was some really scuffed stuff going on uh, with my run. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, on Route 7, I, I wanted to get an Abra, so I was like resetting for an Abra, but then Nine Tails was just there, so I was like, why not yeah, go for like it? It's, it's, for the it's very funny because I feel like, I don't want to say like uh, cursed, like like commentators cursed it, because I had just asked Sai, what, what would you do if you saw Nine Tails? And you kind of left it a bit open ended, and then boom, Nine Tails on screen. Yeah, I, I heard you guys talking about it. Yeah, I was like, I, I was like, I think if the catch route has gone like catastrophically wrong, we go for the nine tails. But uh, well, I normally wouldn't even out. like, I wouldn't, I wouldn't cut there, I wouldn't reset that route. But I, I felt like I had enough of a lead because my early game was so good to at least like entertain the fact and entertain it, the idea, and be a little bit safe. Um, but then Leggy started catching up to me, and that really made me nervous. <laughs> and, and, and to that again and congratulations to jt but we also welcome in leggy first of all the good news for you leggy how much did you pv by uh so that's almost three minutes it's about 250. yo um, let's go i want to take a moment to apologize um i've been inadvertently sandbagging in uh the first two races of the <laughs> tournament uh, turns out i after the last year's tournament, I moved this game from the hard drive to my SD card. And guess who only just moved it back? Oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> well, that might help a little bit. Yeah. Now, I, I think now the next thing you're going to tell us is that you're also not playing on OBS screen preview and you're actually playing on monitor. For the oh, never <laughs> played on OBS <laughs> screen preview. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, I have a third monitor set up specifically uh, for this and other Switch games, but... Well, the thing that stood out from your run, Leggy, was actually your early game. You caught the Bulbasaur and then Chansey spawned in Mount Moon. So you had the legendary Mount Ivysaur before right. even getting it to Cerulean. How are you feeling after having all that experience through the early game? Uh, I will admit my first thought was, huh, I guess I'm not, not going to make the double moonstone timer. <laughs> <laughs> um, because, like, I was not expect Like, I saw the Clefairy spawn on the room between the two floors, and I'm like, okay, I'll pick that up, I'll be going to get... Oh, that's a Chansey. Oh, I have to. You always um, have to. 
Yeah. I will admit, I have no idea what nature my Pikachu was. I just knew it wasn't bad. <laughs> I mean, I'll admit, I forgot to even check and acknowledge the natures in the early part of the run. Um, so, look, looks like you didn't have too much of an issue. Uh, but the other thing that really stood out was your Ketrot was like the opposite of whatever JT was doing. You had an amazing uh, like mid-game section and you were just ready to cash in on a high catch count. I mean, look at all the bonuses that you had. Yeah. The Abra specifically stands out to me as saying, all right, I'm pretty comfy in this part of the run. Oh, yeah. Like when I saw that, that Abra immediately after getting the Growlithe. I was starting to get a little worried when I was running up there, but uh, then I saw the Growlithe right away. That, plus the Bulbasaur, plus the Krabby, like, I was feeling really good. I was up to 56 planned at one point. <laughs> and then, you know, the big part where I cashed it in was just looking at the Psyduck on Route 17 and going, nah. Nah. <laughs> and, and then it doesn't stop there. Your star was phenomenal. So after you catch that star and you see its stats and you're like, oh, yeah, this is good. Like, wh when when in the run were you starting to think, oh, oh, this could, this could really PB? Um, so first of all, I was a little salty with the star because I had to repel to even get it to spawn. Oh, that's right. You did have the late yeah. star. Yeah, I was get, I was getting a little frustrated with it, but uh, so this P my previous PB was the one I set in my first race of the tournament, where I had to go catch the legendary Route 16 Venonat, and so <laughs> I knew that as long as I was keeping pace with my splits up until Koga, I had a huge amount of time save coming for me. Um. And the point where I really felt like, oh, this is real, was being uh, pace for pace with my splits, being ahead on catches basically throughout Mount Moon, both going into it and coming out of it. I was, you know, less than 20 seconds off and like two or three catches up. Wow. Even that early in the game. Yeah. Well, that is so worthy of a massive congratulations uh, for a massive PV. And yes, thank you for realizing that you had to rock Lee, take off the sandbags and say, I, I go faster now. You know, if I had been a little bit better prepped, I would have had that GIF ready to show in the corner <laughs> as I got into the Hall of Fame. <laughs> Ah, so that is fantastic, Leggy. 3.11.09, that's a very good time. Yeah, like... Obviously, you know, I dropping four minutes over the course of the tournament is great. I, I think my plan after this, because unfortunately, you know, officially mathematically eliminated, so I'm not going to be racing next round, but I definitely want to get the sub 3.10. And I'm definitely going to keep working for it. Sub 310 is one of the hardest barriers to break. And uh, I remember when I broke it, it felt so good to finally break it. Mm -hmm. It is such a good feeling to finally break it. And you're you're right there. You're knocking on the door. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, even, even I've been in that situation where I was standing right at 310. You're just standing on the precipice of what you feel <laughs> like is great greatness. And then all you... Uh, the next thing you know, you're like 308, 307. And it's just like, oh, that wasn't that hard. <laughs> <laughs> uh, overall, that was a fantastic race, guys. I'm glad I came out to commentate this yeah. one and run tech for it. Uh, it was really awesome to watch it. Uh, the catch route alone is uh, a meme forever. Oh, yeah. I am really excited to go watch this back. I. I had it open on my phone and I was checking it a little bit just to see how I was pacing relative uh, to, you know, both my opponents. And, like, if J JT even slipped up for a second, I was ready to strike. Yeah, that was stressful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, you were I right, like, you were right behind JT, like, the whole race. Like, yeah. right after Blaine is when it kind of, like, converged. 
Um, mm-hmm. And we were like, I think JT is fine because JT, you were at 48 catches beating Blaine. I was like, oh, we're we're done. Yeah, like we just picked the gifts and it's <laughs> yeah. over. Um, so I was like, JT doesn't have to go through any more Evos, but th- you guys were like synced up at Blaine. And I was yeah, like, we yeah, no, this is wow. this is fantastic. You were you were like you were starting the quiz right as I was finishing the quiz, I think. <laughs> yeah, you were both on the quiz at the same time. Yeah. Well, I, I I am glad that, you know, I kept you on your toes. Congratulations. Yeah, that, by was, the way. that was really fun. Yeah. Th- and Gigi's on the on the PB for sure. Thank you. And thanks. you Thank you guys for commentating. Y'all made this like, yeah. such a fun race just listening to you guys. Of course. <laughs> uh, I mean, I had, I had yeah. a blast. Yeah, I need to hang out with Cy more. <laughs> well, <laughs> I need to, I need we, to got a whole week actually like sch- schedule you in for some just hangout time on my calendar here. Yeah, because, we've got yes, a this whole week so, coming so much up. Fun. Woo-hoo. <laughs> yeah, uh, obviously we're trying to get through uh, hopefully most of round four before we start GDQ. Yeah, uh, I think a lot of us are going. Are... Yeah, you, me, and Etiquette mean... are going. Uh, she's going. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, so if we need to take a little GDQ pause, I don't think too many. I mean, think of it like the like the All Star break, right? Yeah, la- last know, year too. Everybody uh, has an All Star break in their schedule, so this know, is just ours. I know last year this didn't overlap with GDQ at all, but last year GDQ was in like May for some reason. Like it was yeah, like it was, like it was a bit January. earlier. Yeah, it was Funny like enough, late spring done quick, not summer games done quick. You know what it is? Uh, we did have a little bit of an oddity because it was actually Cardboard Clash yes. uh, happened in the middle of the tournament. So some of us uh, were just in Chicago yes. and not able to play. Yeah. Uh, also, RPG Limit Break happened in the middle of the tournament last year. Oh my god, it did? I do remember that. Yeah. RPG Limit Break was super early this year. That was in May. Whew. Yeah. Oh, so what speaking, a blast. Uh, speaking of upcoming matches, uh, we were talking about yeah, these you're a on tech. Come on, yeah, up. speaking of upcoming <laughs> matches, we talked about a few of these earlier so we could uh talk over the uh the the gym leader music that YouTube likes to not let us use, but oh, yes, um, <laughs> coming up tonight, uh, or early tomorrow morning, depending on how you look at it, um. Uh, we have DGen we, hours. Uh, Pokemon Speedruns TV After Dark uh, will be Albi, Aspect, and Yaxo uh, over on uh, our first channel, uh, Pokemon Speedruns TV. Uh, and then later in the day, 12 hours later, uh, to be exact, uh, Pokétax, Iron, and Furist uh, will be playing that one out. Uh, and then uh, T Pat, why don't you tell us a little bit about the last race here on this list? Yes. So this last race should be a doozy. It is myself. Crisis and Kerbis. Uh, don't fret. I may have been down paired in this one, but Kerbis is a strong runner. So uh, that will cap us off on Sunday afternoon at 1130 Eastern. And then immediately following the final round, uh, the final race of round three, we will, of course, have everybody's favorite slots to determine the Swiss round four matches. So to everybody that is still fighting for a spot in top cut or those that just want another fun race under their belts. We'll have the round four slots and matchups coming up immediately following that on Sunday. And uh, hopefully we will get most of round four in before GDQ, which starts the following weekend. Uh, Your all-star break uh, will feature a couple Pokemon runs by both myself doing the teal mask on uh, a Sunday from uh, a week from this Sunday. And we have TTS that is doing white two challenge mode, or at least it's an incentive to do challenge mode. So yeah, sure you'll donate, coming up, uh, Pokemon sure you'll donate that Make sure, donate for the, for the challenge mode. So, but anyways, uh, again, congratulations to JT. Uh, congratulations to Leggy and a big thank you and GG to Allo for also participating and giving us lots of memes today. Uh, this race will absolutely be featured in the highlight reel. So chat, make sure that you have any clips submitted in the uh, clips dis- uh, portion of the Discord so we can have that and make Edda's life a little bit easier. Uh, thank you, everybody, for tuning in today. Uh, make sure to watch the races for the rest of this weekend. First sigh. I am T Pat. Again, congrats to JT on today's victory, and we'll send you out with some more music. So, thank you again for tuning in, everybody. Have a great night and a great weekend.